Hello. Hello. Oh, I was muted. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hey, Chris, thanks for the sub. I just did that right now. <laughs> I've have to back up on my stream again. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Of course. I am so excited for tonight. Oh. I'll be right back. Okay. Also, I enabled uh, two-factor authentication on Twitch, and I got some cool, uh, like, night emotes with it. <laughs> oh, cool. Okay, I will uh, be back in just a couple minutes. Uh, we'll get some more people trickling in here. And we'll get some more people uh, coming into the stream. Yeah, just so everybody knows, my sound alerts do not work at the moment. Hey, sorry. I got this. Zero sugar. Watermelon Mountain Dew. <gasps> oh, they have those? I, yeah, I guess you so. can get Mountain Dew zero sugar. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Yeah, that's the new thing. Not diet, but zero sugar. I don't know what the difference is. They probably just use a sweetener instead of aspartame. Stevia, most likely. It still has phenylalanine in it. Hi, Cole. Janelle, turn around and yell, hi, Cole. Hi, Cole. Tell that little bitch to get in here. I mean, don't actually... I mean, you don't have to actually use those words. She just shouts it out behind her. <laughs> oh, I'm sure she did. He he said that he was surprised you were already on because we thought you, we, you got off work at 6. No, I got off early today. Oh, okay. I'm gonna go grab a glass of water real quick. Yeah, I'm gonna go uh, get ready for this. <laughs> Be right back, everybody. Janelle, are you there? Guess not.
Chris Hart. No one else yet. Including myself. Hi, my audio is here, but um, my thing's not ready yet. I'm speaking to the people. It's so funny because I also did when I went to the store for some reason. Like, yeah, I was like, I need something other than tap water. I ordered a pizza for dinner tonight, and I debated getting like a soda with it, but I was like, I'll just stick with water, I guess. <laughs> Look at this! Stay awake for days. <laughs> Melon, Major Melon Mountain Dizzers. It's fucking Mountain Dew. <laughs> mountain, Mountain, Mountain Dew. <laughs> uh, so I finished your guys' player handouts for Icewind Dale, I think. Um, I'm just kind of waiting to finish everyone's all together so that I can like go back oh. and tweak them in case there's any like cross-referencing stuff. So. What does that well, mean? What's a player handout? Um, so I'm going to give you a little handout with knowledge that your character would know at the beginning of the game. Cool. <laughs> Doll and I are going to know everything. Well, you guys aren't the only ones that are starting in Icewind Dale. Um, but Janelle, I, ha I do have to say that because of the path that you're, you have chosen for your character, you certainly do know a lot about just the, the, the general layout of Icewind Dale, as you might imagine. So. I like making my characters, like, import. I want to be a um, lead character. I mean, the the thing is, like, I, I don't think it's, like, overpowered or anything. It's just that this, it just makes sense that your character would know this. So you just have, you know, that foundational knowledge, so. I know, it's all that I have already talked, and I was like, maybe I've been to where you live. Maybe at least I know where you live. Uh, yeah. Um, and s I actually wrote something in Donald's uh, handout about you. <laughs> oh, cool. All right. 
Um, but I did not write anything about Donald in your handout, so. I'm popular. I'm a cool kid. No, I'm just joking. Uh. Well, look who decided to join us. Wow, okay, I'm that's the one. Yeah, it took me a minute, sorry. <laughs> Is it a good game? <laughs> I got off work. I <laughs> Resident Evil. Uh, it's really good. It's really, really fucking good. Uh, and then I was like, "Oh, shit, D and D," and uh, I rushed over as fast as I could. Is um, Hexamer playing today? Yes. Yes, sorry. Yes, yeah, we will. We will join on the Twitch. Ah. Bah, but ha. Moon Moon! I'm just joking. But Moon Moon! <laughs> you can have your Moon Moon all you want. But Moon Moon. But Moon Moon. My love. Donald, My when moon. you sent. Donald, when you sent that text out or that video, that Snapchat of you talking to. Jesse Cox, I was like, no, this is how I was feeling when I subscribed to Moon Moon and Lyric, and then, like, they say my name, and I'm like, oh, they said my name! I know, isn't that great? <laughs> Are you on? Am I on? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, that's not you. Pay money, Whoopi. Pay money, Whoopi! I love Whoopi. One day, okay. I'm gonna fuck that Moogie. What? You're gonna fuck Wubby? <laughs> Have you ever seen uh, Auntie Donna's Big Ol' House of Fun? Oh, no, I was I was told to avoid it. <laughs> oh, that's the worst advice you've ever been given. <laughs> okay. That shit is hilarious. There's just this random uh, character named Moogie, and there's just this commercial where he's being all silly and cute and then at the end it just cuts to one of the dudes sitting on the couch and he's like you know one day I'm gonna fuck that Moogie <laughs> <laughs> fucking hilarious okay I should probably check it out then I, I was I was hesitant it's, it's a good time it's a good time hi Bantam welcome in Hello. have I been visible this entire time you sure yes. have what have you been able to see me this whole time? Throwing it over the yes. fence? <laughs> Throwing in the neighbor's pool. <laughs> oh, God. We're talking about throwing a, a whole turkey into the neighbor's pool because it's been in our refrigerator too long. Your baby's been on the pool and then it stayed in two boxes. Oh, God. Which one of your neighbors has a pool? Uh, Mark next door. The guy on the right? Stage right, yeah. Okay. I was like, right how? <laughs> like, from the back door facing out. Right to my right. I oh, forgot the name of this website trying to get on here. I don't know which way is east. <laughs> Honestly, it took me like five minutes and I had to Google play D and D online to remember the name of this website. <laughs> every other week. Donald, how do these um, stream things work? They don't how do I get yet. bits. So you can purchase bits uh, from Twitch, but none of my sound alerts work just yet. Um, I'm trying to get um, OBS set up right now. I'm just using Twitch studio. And I don't know how to do that yet. So, other than that, you can send bits using the emoticons and stuff. Uh, the emotes. I do not have a personal emote yet, but I will. Especially now that I have a six-month subscriber. Now I have to make all kinds of things. You have a six-month subscriber? Yeah. That's I like... Do. A thousand dollars. Now he's got to get a tattoo of his name on his chest. He didn't expect oh. to get a six months so fast, no. but you put it in the you put it in the tier list. 
it happens. That's the law. <laughs> oh, no. I also got a follow from somebody named Fiction7x. <laughs> Thanks for that. Appreciate Shout it. Shout out Fiction7s. Yeah, what up? X. 7x. Seven 7s seven is totally different person. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looks like Hexmer is on his way in. Take your time. Take your time. Take your time. Oh. First time purchasers discount. Thank you, Janelle. Yo, what up, Jenny Boo with the sub? And yo, that <laughs> gift to Soto30. Thank you. I appreciate that. That's sweet. Hey, and nice. whenever those sound sets are, are set up, they'll actually work. But Ow. for now, it's da 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 da. <laughs> I'll just vocally make them from now on. <laughs> oh, okay. But yeah, I'm getting them set up. But I appreciate you. Love you. Thank you. Who's gonna get that gift? How does that work? Soto thirty. So it goes from the list of uh, people that subbed to me or that followed me. And then it goes down the list of people who have been gifted a sub once. So Soto30 got gifted a sub and uh, yeah. I got gifted a sub once in the lyrics chat. Yeah, I, I. it is crazy. If you go and just watch people on Twitch, I know that sounds crazy, but yeah. you go there and you watch, you will eventually get a sub from that person. People are crazy generous on this website. I was just reading about gifted subs and you know, if you just do it to the community, it just, it goes through like an algorithm and picks randomly from the followers and mm -hmm. I guess. Well, it's cool. Or you can gift to a specific person. Yeah. Well, I'm glad Soto30 got one. Uh, they're always on my stream checking me out, so. How do you get your money? Um, <laughs> every, they send it, um, Where's the check? After Dying. you get, after you uh, make more than a hundred dollars, they send a check. So. Oh, okay. So is it like that uh, that game at like Peter Piper where like all the coins have to fall off at once and then? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, pretty much, yeah. Okay. You get one of those little fucking ticket cards. And you're like, well, this is probably worth like twenty or thirty hundred tickets. And it's it's ten tickets. Have you not had that happen yet? Like the Star Trek one, Dave and Buster's has those, where the little cards and you redeem them for tickets, and you think they're worth a lot because they're 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 different than coins. Yeah. But no, they're worth about ten tickets each. I don't think I've I've I guess used those. <laughs> I enjoy ticket games a fair amount. I play this game called Tower Unite, which Don Ladd, if you haven't played that, you should check it out. Um, and there's an arcade in it now. You can unlock tickets to get actual prizes. Oh, that's it's cool. A lot, it's a lot of fun. There's a casino, there's an arcade, there's a bunch of mini games. You can decorate a whole bunch of stuff, make your own condo. It's it's a good time. Um, uh, Don Lad, I've been doing uh, a lot of ventures in the VR chat lately. Oh God. And let me tell you, I've seen some awful stuff, but I've also seen some really cool stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I could imagine. I'll eventually get there. Yeah, you should you should look into it. You can play on PC without VR. So I mean Yeah. <laughs> VR chat is I might be a little too old for VR chat. I don't know. No, that no. I, don't quite I think get you yet. should do it. I think you should do it. No, okay. you love VR chat. <laughs> I can't right. do it, but you'd be good at it. How do I how do I tell you you're not too old for VR chat? <laughs> I had okay, so this Just is like this that. is this is terrible. But I had a conversation with a grown man, like like he was an adult man, about um, oh gosh, what was it? it? He he was uh, he was trying to tell me about stuff from America, and then he started talking to me about cartoons, and we ended up talking about Pokemon for like a good like twenty minutes, and then we ended up talking <laughs> about, like um, we just went down this whole gambit of a list, and it it was weird. And he was like, yeah, like I'm I'm thirty, and I'm like, oh, dang. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Wow, you good are. for you, pal. Let's, let's, let's watch more cartoons. <laughs> I'm coming back. I probably should talk to you, honestly, when I think about it. Probably, probably sitting around VR chat telling people about Pokemon, how much you love Pokemon. 
Yeah, I could do that. Can you also just be a Pokemon if you want? I can't hear you, Hex. Is that a new backpack? Yeah, this is the backpack Nate got me. It's a little Pokemon backpack. Oh, no. Nice. Yes. Is I it shiny? It. No, it's just new. Did you get that? Did you get that journal at Fry's? Yes. I saw that journal. No joke. I bet that was a journal I even had in my hand last night when I was. I bought it like a week ago, but it's probably the oh. exact same one. Yeah, because uh, I was like, Jake, look, you can get this one for D and D. That's exactly and he's like, what I got no, I'm getting. You. I'm getting a regular notebook. And I'm like, that's not cool. <laughs> what a wuss. I, I actually bought a really nice one from Amazon. And he's like, Chanel, do you really need to spend 20 bucks on it? And I'm like, no, but it's cool. If I yeah. made you, I'm like, keep it on her. I would not. And he was like, fair enough. <laughs> and then he, then he got the notification because it was through his Amazon. And he's like, yeah, that's her character would have that. Amazing. But yeah, to answer a cold question a long time ago, Jake and I have not told each other about anything about our characters. Oh. He refuses to tell me anything. Um, other than so that he's a, a male, elfish person, I don't know. I didn't she glass. described him as a boy at first, an elf boy, and that intrigued me. <laughs> um, I mean, so I don't know. I would like to say that I remember specifically uh, when Janelle called me so that we could have our one-on-one -on -one to go over her character. I think Jake walked in the room and he like he was like, "Oh, are you talking about your character?" And she was like, "Yeah." And he, he was like, "Okay, I'll leave." And he left. Dang. And she was like, yeah. "Okay, it's just us now." And then he was. Then he came a little bit later. It's like, "Stop, stop, stop, stop!" I could totally hear you. Let me put my headphones on. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. These oh, are my nice new dice. dice. Oh, Jake said those metal dice were cool as fuck. Thank you. Nice. Those are very good. It Fucking looks like cool, it's like right? dice on the moon. Yes, yeah, so I got one set of metal dice, and then I got these uh, really cool dice that have like weird symbols on them, and then one that has the horoscope symbols on them. Right. What are they? What are they good for? Can't read the symbols. Uh, Absolutely nothing. They just look good with the set. Yeah, okay. they're all twenties. That's what's good about them. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that was like twenty. No. And I rolled a 20. cancer. Okay. Cancer <laughs> is twenty. Whoops! All twenties, right. guys. <laughs> Oops! All twenties. Okay. I have the book out. Ooh. 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 Say it again. <laughs> okay. So, kids, let's uh, just go ahead and jump right into it. Everybody ready? Donkey people. That is all. We're going to go to nice. Chris. Oh, yeah. I should probably not have the stream up. <laughs> Oh, this is a Abbey of Saint Markovia. Was that always there? No, yeah. that well, the the words were not, but they are now. Because for some reason they hide them on the map to you guys. I don't know. It's weird. To give away, so we don't know the main places. It's like named locations in Skyrim or Fallout. You gotta actually roll up, discover them. Mm-hmm. Yep. If I had to imagine. Cool. Have you worked on your uh, your Nord voice yet? Uh, I might just end up going German because that'll be easier. <laughs> oh, your Nord I, person sounded cool as fuck, though. I have been practicing so many voices. I'm so excited. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> so, thank you all for coming back. It's all kind of cozy in here. Uh, the last thing that we saw while we were all together, everybody made it into uh, Kresk, a very small, very independent town. Um, 
there was a pool to the north um, that Irina was drawn to um, where she saw the visage of a man named Sergei. Um, and she uh, very narrowly escaped uh, the explosion that destroyed the pools there. Uh, relations with people in town are uh, rough at best. Um, aside from uh, Yugen and Hexmer, um, the other three of you have found yourselves uh, at the Burgo Master's house near the entrance. Uh, no thanks. Okay. And uh, Yugen was able to help somebody uh, with their six daughters and uh, help them get to bed for a place to stay and some food and shelter. Hexamer was the last one we saw. Are you guys seeing my ring pop up? No. I wasn't no. last time either, to be honest with you. Interesting. Uh, um, oh. You might be on the layer. Oh, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay. Um, Hexamer, you saw a very odd-looking man, uh, mostly cloaked, uh, come out from the gates that you tried to go into. Uh, and the person... Let me see... Um, Let me see if I can read this to you. Um, okay, so um, I, we'll just start from here. The road from the village climbs above the mist to the wide ledge on which the abbey is perched. A light dusting of snow covers the trees and the rocky earth. The gravel road passes between two small stone outbuildings, to either side of which stretches a five-foot-high, three-foot-thick wall of jumbled stones held together with mortar. Blocking the road are iron gates attached to the outbuildings by rusty hinges. They appear to be unlocked. Viewed through the gates, the stone abbey stands quiet. Its two wings are joined by a 15-foot high curtain wall. A belfry protrudes from the rooftop of the northern uh, wing, which also spots a chimney billowing gray smoke. <clears throat> Before these two uh, figures came out from the gate, um, you were able to hear light violin playing. And as you peered in to try to find uh, a connection with somebody uh, inside, uh, you caught the heartbeat and the rhythm of two people dancing. Um, this odd looking creature that comes out from the gate is followed by a very tall hooded figure uh, he has uh, one large uh, donkey ear on the right hand side you can see that he's hunched all the way over uh, both of his legs seem to be uh, some kind of uh, canine uh, and he has a horse tail protruding out from underneath his cape he stands tall and throws the cape back and looks towards the moon and lets out a hee uh, It's li a lot less majestic and a lot less intimidating than you were expecting. Um, and that is when you hear uh, the large figure standing behind him. Um, a very soft feminine voice comes from this large figure. Otto, cut that out! You're going to piss it. Let's get back. And she kind of starts to look around into the darkness. It's all you, Hexman. <laughs> you can... Go ahead. Oh, I was going to uh, say, whatever you'd like to do, if anything. Um, can I telepathically send them both a very short message? Uh, sure. When you, um, when you go to kind of telepathically connect with them, 
Um, it's almost like there's not enough brain power there to connect with. It, there's something wrong here. This, this ain't, it's not so much that their minds are blocked. It's just that... You, you, it's like they're not human enough. That, there's just something about them that's just... Even if you were to run up to them, you would get the uh, feeling that they might not even give two shits. They're, I, they're very dumb. Oh, very dumb. Um, okay, I kind of... Am I hidden right now? Like, am I in cell? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> uh, can I, like, throw a rock further away from me to rattle some other bushes in this way just to kind of spook them? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's fine. So you very easily just throw a rock over towards that area. Um, you see the... Uh, what uh, what you heard her call him Otto. You see Otto lower himself down to the ground um, and look about. Um, and you see him with one leap right off uh, just, just from standing. He leaps up about 20 feet into one of the very large, tall trees off to the side. Um, and you see him start to... Uh, peer out uh, the other figure here uh, runs out towards Otto and you see the figure kind of put her hand up uh, towards Otto in the tree uh, and Otto kind of freezes with a yeah, like and you see him tumble out of the tree all the way down uh, the big figure takes off her cloak for just a moment, uh, and you see this very large uh, woman, half of her face uh, humanoid, with blonde hair, very jagged and cut. The other side of her face is scaled completely from head all the way down half of her body. Uh, including her hand um, and she rushes over to Otto and throws her cape over him um, and you see her kind of lift him up with one hand uh, and she uh, kind of looks about and, and rushes back towards the gate And you see her very unceremoniously throw Otto through the gate. And then she very quietly and politely closes the gate. And you see her looking out for a while, her eyes catching the moonlight every once in a while. Can I just kind of poke my head out a little bit and just like wave friendly? Uh, yeah. Um, let me see. Oh, these are these are the new dice. I can't break into those yet. Roll for initiative. Playing violin. I just I this has been burning in the back of my mind. I was gonna ask them if they're human or dancer because I I feel like that gets everything out of the question out of the way. Um, so about Um, you can't tell whether or not this figure saw you. Um, but shortly after you waved. They, uh, she dipped out of sight, taking Otto with her. Um, and you, you. Oh, what? Okay. So, uh, we begin in the morning. Okay. Um, at the house here next to the entrance, the Burgomaster's house. The occupants of the rooms here are awoken to hustle and bustle about the house. Um, the help and uh, it seems a few of the neighbors uh, have come to the aid of a woman who is very clearly very pregnant. Um, 
the Baroness runs about the house, uh, gathering cloth and uh, a large bowl of warm water, and uh, you can see that sh uh, Dimitri is sitting off to the side, um, first thing in the morning, already drinking. Um, the Baroness seems very focused, um, and the young woman sitting on the uh, the kind of couch up against the far wall, um, you can see she's just covered in sweat. She's pale as a ghost, uh, and they have uh, they have her laying uh, in a way where she's clearly about to give birth. Those three of you that are in the house uh, uh, all seem to wake up to the sounds of the goings on. Um, I go down and offer assistance. The Baroness. I haven't birthed anybody, but I need uh, help. Okay, so, uh, yeah, the second that the Baroness sees you, um, she says, uh, you, I, uh, apologize for the informalities, but are you quite sure that all of that water from the spring up north is gone? Are you sure that it's been destroyed? Do I have knowledge that it's been... I think because last time you said that it was, right? Yeah, you guys know that it was pretty annihilated. Yeah, I, I, I turned to her and like, I'm sorry, yes, it was all evaporated. It was <sighs> destroyed. All right. Are you of any use with healing magics, either of you? Are you talking to Talisman as well or Bantam? Uh, uh, to any of you. Um, I tell her that I have some magic capabilities um, and um, oh, I have a one in medicine, but I have some healing capabilities, yes. Alright, well if you'd stay by, just in case things start to go south here, then we may be of need for some healing. Otherwise, the rest of you, this is not my first birth that I've ever assisted in, so I'm going to need everybody to just stay out of my way, please. Um, the woman that is giving birth begins to scream, and the, uh, the room starts to feel very cramped, and uh, the burgomaster goes and uh, sits behind the young woman, um, and kind of holds the back of her hand. Uh, the Baroness kind of takes her spot uh, at the foot of the woman, uh, and the screaming just echoes out um, from the woman. After a few moments pass by, Bantam, you're there as well, correct? Yeah, and it, uh, so you said this was the... The, the Baroness that's here that's helping with the birth? Yes. So um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna waddle up uh, and uh, I'm not as covered as I was like last night uh, and I, I'm gonna slip the Baroness a uh, potion of healing. Okay. Um, she looks down and she uh, looks at you kind of inquisitively and uh, she uh, grabs the potion of healing and you see her um, set it n next to her uh, along with some other uh, vials of you, th you see different lotions and um, uh, you know some things to help along uh, some cloth and some bandage that kind of thing do I see this? Bantam were you trying to be swift with it or are you just giving it to her? No, just, you know, pretty casual. Okay, so yeah, you, you like see her. Head. Yeah, so you I, see Bantam, and I believe this would probably be the first time you've seen him since, right? Or yeah. you guys briefly saw um, him last night. Mm-hmm. He just went straight to bed, I think. Mm. Um, I just go up next to him, and I give him a good, good hearty pat on the back. And I'm like, that was sweet. She helped me. I help back. Yeah. I phone I. 
I um, am looking at the scene, and Taliesin looks a little bit, I guess, out of place, but he kind of calls towards the Baroness, and he says, please let me know if I can be of assistance. Uh, as you can see, and he kind of flashes a, a, a bunch of different conjured tools, like medical tools and stuff, and he's like, I, I can make any tool you need, just let me know. <laughs> um, she kind of looks over, uh, and before she could even say anything, uh, the woman uh, kind of kicks her leg out, um, and the uh, Baroness's attention is quickly uh, snapped back to her, um, and the young woman starts to cry out, um, it hurts, it hurts! Um, the Baroness uh, reaches under the, uh, the woman's dress and tells her to, you need to push, you need to push! Um, and the, uh, the Baroness, you see her eye, uh, her face kind of go pale for a moment. Um, uh, and for just a moment, the young woman stops screaming. And you see her let out a huge sigh. And she collapses back down onto the couch. And the Burgomaster kind of catches her from falling. The Baroness pulls the baby away, and she quickly wraps it up, and she turns towards the mother, and the room is silent as she hands over the baby into the mother's arms, and the mother's face just kind of goes numb of emotions. She stares at her baby. The Baroness passes by Persephone. And she says, it's So sad. The child has no soul. She looks over to Taliesin. And she says, I know you see it. The child. Just another soulless vessel in Barovia. The Baroness kind of loses her uh, kind of command of the room. Anytime she's been around, she has been the one kind of running the show. Even though she was the one who just lost her child. Even though her husband is the Burgomaster. She is the Baroness, and she's now showing her sadness and her weakness. Um, and she kind of... You can see her kind of nervously walk to her chambers to clean herself up. And she disappears off into her room. Um, the Burgomaster stands and starts to um, ask people to politely leave the room and you see um, him bring out a ta uh, blanket and put it over the uh, the new mother. Um, the mother is beaming. She's happy as ever but the baby lies in her arms holding on to the tip of her finger looking at her but the baby does not cry. Before I leave the room, um, I would like to take a closer look at the baby um, and just to, with my Eldritch Sight to see if there was any remnants that like flickered out or if, if I see any, anything at all. No. No. And this isn't uncommon at all. Um, about... I would say 80% of Barovians don't have that spark. Mm -hmm. um, so it's not uncommon. Um, it, it was especially um, like for when Bantam went by the nursery in Valakai. That's when it was kind of really apparent how few souls there really are here um, that can feel true happiness and true love and, and all these things. Um, so yeah, this baby was just not born. 
with a soul. Does does the mother have a soul? Can we tell that? Um, you can tell that she does because of the way she's looking at her baby. The baby's not crying. Everybody in the room knows. You know, it's this kind of somber feeling in the room. But the way the mother is looking at that baby, there's no way she doesn't have a soul. I, I want to go up to the mother and um, kind of... Is she sitting down like on a bed? or? It's like a couch. It's more like a couch piece. Okay, I just kind of... I just kind of take a knee next to her and I just kind of encourage her and be like, um, I, I, I just kind of encourage her and tell her, you know, don't necessarily mind what the Baroness says, like, um, love this baby. It is your own, you know, just take in what you can and give what you can and who knows what the future will hold. Uh, she looks up at you. Uh, she's got a smile on her face, but she's kind of unable to put into words how she feels. She's very, very tired. Um, but she kind of reaches out her hand uh, and puts it on your on your wrist and gives you an acknowledgement. And she turns back to her baby and. Dimitri uh, stands and walks to you and says, All right, Persephone, we do uh, appreciate having you all here this morning. Sorry for a very unusual wake-up call, but we do with what we can around here, so that's just life for us. Uh, I just... um. I take one more look at the, the baby and the mother and I just kind of give them both a like a nice little pat on the head and then turn around and give the burgomaster a pat on the shoulder. Okay. Um, he uh, just kind of gives you a nod. Um, the new mother doesn't turn f- away from her baby. Uh, Dimitri closes the door. Um, and he says, um, what was that? Um, oh, uh, the Irina and Ismark, um, you can see them kind of respectfully take their, uh, take their leave out of the house. Um, and they make their way into, uh, just kind of a common area just outside Um, is Bantam near us? Where, where's everybody else at? I, I go looking for Talos and Bantam. I was just in the next room over. Bantam, where are you at? Oh, I can't hear hey, you. Hey, hey. You're muted, honey. He's not muted. Oh, you doesn't have his headphones on. No. No. Nope. Fuck. Just kidding. I wanted to ruin that moment of perfect childbirth by like kicking in the door and being like, guys, there's donkey people in the avid. Oh my god. Let Nata pick off part. <laughs> I thought you were gonna say, Hexmer, that you were gonna, you know, break up the party by falling out of a portal. <laughs> oh god. Maybe refresh yourself over. Directly onto the baby. Casting. Hi. Thank you. Wow, yelling. <laughs> Just kidding. Can you? Can you still hear me? It has to be closer. We can barely hear you. That's so weird. This is better. Yeah. 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 Okay, I might have blown out the gate. I apologize, everybody. No, yeah, I was um, just kind of just right up next to this woman giving birth just uh taking it all in fascinated yeah i was right there oh okay i give you a pat too hmm. pat's all around pat. <laughs> pat, pat. Pat. 
Am uh, I? Where is my icon? Where's my character? Like you were not he here until the like the end of the day. So, uh, okay. So, uh, um, sorry. Oh, I was gonna say, are you guys gonna meet somewhere and? Uh, yeah. I mean, I go. I'm assuming we're probably in the same room now. I I turn to to Bantam and I'm like, so Bantam, sorry we left you out in the woods. Um. We had we had to get back, and we couldn't find you. It's fine. I uh, got here around the same time you did, I think. Uh, that is, yeah, it, that, when Bantam says that, um, Talisman kind of looks um, looks at Bantam and then look, notices this uh, liquid, this black liquid on him, um, and I'd like to inspect that. He's t- I think he's joking. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, yeah. Roll a perception check, Talos. Can you guys hear the fan going on in the, that background or no? Not really. 14. Okay, um, you can't quite make out what it is, um, it just kind of looks like, uh, mixed in with the rest of the mud and gunk from the wolves and viscera of war, you can't really tell where it came from on him, you just notice that it's about him. Do you, do I notice anything magical about it with Eldritch Sight? Uh, no, it's just kind of... Battlefield detritus, you would assume. Okay. Um, so then Talison's going to look up um, at Bantam and say, can you tell us where did you go? I know, know you, you kind of dodged us last night because you said you were tired, but now that it's bright and early in the morning, are you feeling comfortable to talk about it? What happened? happened? Check your microphone settings, my dude. On your on your computer. What if you just use the thing on the computer? Yeah, on take off the headset. Hit, hit the little speaker thing, right click it, and then open up the door. Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. There we go. Okay. Uh. Sorry, guys. One second. I, one second. I do not mean to break this up, but she's been having that for Sorry. Okay. All right. <laughs> I think he's getting pup thumbs, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. It's working here. Okay. Um, <laughs> I, uh,. I was really hurt and I just kind of spazzed out and followed along behind the party, uh, healing myself as best as I could, but uh, yeah, it's an emotional outburst and uh, I'm fine. I'm really fine. Do you need healing now? No, 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 I'm, I'm fine. I'm fine. So your emotions were hurt? Yeah. I needed emotional healing. Yes. And I found it. Through quiet uh, self-reflection and meditation. Brooding. Brood? No. Yes. No, not brooding. I, I, I understand what he's getting at. You know, you've seen how how my moods shift when I commune with Corvus. Yeah, it's much the same as that. Uh, exactly the same as that, as a matter of fact. You can explain it better. You you explain this, Talison. <laughs> he gets it. This guy. Um, uh, Talison kind of looks at Bantam and he's like, "Well, hmm. I don't think that you and I approach magic the same way, so I don't know if I can explain it for you." <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, I'm. I'm all right. 
Look at my face. I'm whole. I'm good. I'm happy. What caused your emotions to go haywire? What Did somebody hurt your feelings or was it something that happened? No, I guess I just wished I could have been more useful. Uh, sad I, uh, I fumbled it for the party, I guess. Yeah, Tom, I don't think that happened. I don't see how you done anything wrong. I don't recall, at least. You you were able to uh, take down those wolves with the rest of us. I don't think I even took down one. It's true. You you blasted those wolves with your thunder wave. I blasted the wolves with my thunder wave, but I was the reason they... Uh, I was caught alone with my pants down figuratively, and the group paid the price for it. If I was with the team... If I had heard the screams, we would be fine. I don't think that's anything that you had control of at the moment. I mean, what's what's past is past and you can't undo it. But I think that there were no slights. I, I think that you're beating yourself up over something that is perfectly fine. No, nope, I don't think anybody holds anything against you. I don't think you should be burdening yourself with such doubt. I completely agree. As you probably can tell in Barovia, we have much worry, much, much more larger problems to worry about here than, than that. And even, you know, I, I completely agree with what Persephone said. It's no one's fault. If anyone, if anything, it's my fault for not warning you sooner because I have the magic slave. <laughs> well, and Bantam, think about it like this. Remember when we were at the Wizards of Wine and Hepsmer and I went downstairs into the cellar and uh, we got blasted to shreds and Hepsmer almost died and then you jumped in to climb the wall and thunder clapped all those lights and that druid. I mean, we were in a dire situation and you came in clutch. Yes. I, I don't know. I guess I feel... Uh, uh, a bit of guilt. I, I, I've I reasoned it out with myself, and I see that you're right. Uh, in the moment, there was nothing I could have done, but I was overtaken by emotion, and I'm fine now. I mean, it, I'm happy you're fine now, and I'm happy you're able to work it out, but um, next time you can just talk with us. You don't have to you know, waddle behind like a sad boy. <laughs> you can join the group, you're not in punishment. I'll take that into consideration next time around. I'll you try can... to be more vocal for the group. Also, sidebar, is that something you say to the people you work with? You're not in punishment? I mean, you were punishing yourself. <laughs> It sounds like something Persephone would say, for sure. Okay, yeah. Because <laughs> that almost sounded like something Janelle would say. Uh. <laughs> well, I mean, Persephone is Janelle, so... <laughs> All right. Um, uh, but I, I, I turn to Mantem, and I'm like, Mantem, if it makes you feel better, I think that maybe you could benefit from staying in the middle of the group, um, and even staying on the cart, because I think that, I don't know if you noticed, but all of our food was pilfered by uh, werewolves, and I bet that could have used a nice thunderclap on their behinds, you know. But I'm, I'm saying it's a great vantage point. You won't be caught off guard, and you'll have, like, from a technical standpoint, I think it would be the best position for you. I could agree with that. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You could take and my horse and leave the car. Uh, Talison kind of uh, speaks up to and he's like, you could always ride on my shoulders too. And he kind of like, um, like cups it, like rolls his shoulders a little bit. And Talison's like 6'3", so. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I, I turn to Bantam and I'm like, I would offer my shoulders, but I think that my armor would be very uncomfortable. I 
So it's that rude. I'm sorry. No. <laughs> what is what rude? Making a joke about your height and. Oh no no no! no, no. <laughs> I'm a realist. I don't get myself. No 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 no. Uh, I I might have to take you up on that crow's nest idea, Talison. Yeah. I like that uh, the name for it. We can call it that from now on. <laughs> Perhaps put a basket on the end of your glaive, I could, uh, yeah? We could toss you into another burning building full of vampires. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are known um, to do that. <laughs> Tal Talison, like, focuses for a second and tries to conjure a glaive with a basket at the end of it instead of a blade. Ah? <laughs> uh, can we roll for that? Uh, I mean, I don't see why not. I, I can pretty much conjure whatever I want with my packed weapon, as long as it's yeah, kind of a weapon. Yeah, so you... <laughs> it's just like a net with a really long pole. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's pretty much like a lacrosse stick. I think that's what they're called. Yeah. Yeah? Uh, how long does that weapon stay active? <laughs> as long as I'm going to do it. <laughs> huh? I'm, I'm quite liking this idea. Let's pocket this. Let's not, <laughs> let's not forget about this one. <laughs> uh, Talison will deconjure the weapon. All right. Seems like we could have some fun with that. Verily. Um, I turned to Bantam, um, and I'm like, have you been doubting yourself for quite some time? You could say that, yes. Yeah. Try not to think about myself is more accurate. You said you try not to think about yourself? Yeah. No, you're you're right. I've I've been doubting myself. That's that's right. Let's change this change the subject. Where's Hexma? Where did he ever make it inside last night? Where's uh where's uh Yugen? Uh, the so okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we are gonna go see exactly what Yugen's up to. <laughs> Yugen is passed out on the floor of the living room of this house. Yes. And you wake up, and three of the youngest daughters um, are sitting in a circle, just kind of looking at you, um, and they're all sitting directly next to your head. Uh, they're very young. None of them can speak. Um, and you don't notice that they're there until the uh, one to your left raises her hand up and smacks the shit out of you. <laughs> waking you from a dead sleep. Uh, uh, can, I, can I help you? Oh my god! What is wrong with you? The mom comes out and she goes, Oh, go, get, go on, get, oh! And you see her go and just lift up the babies and puts one on the couch, puts one over into the playpen, and she picks up the other one and just kind of, uh... All right, then. Unless you uh, plan on doing some more chores around the house, uh, which there are plenty of, uh, looks like it's about time for you to get. <laughs> uh... <clears throat> Yugen kind of puts himself back together, stands up, and uh, he's like, uh, yeah, I can, uh, ah, I, I probably should catch back up with my group. Uh, I really appreciate you letting me stay here last night. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks for your hard work. That's how we do it around here. All right. Appreciate it. Uh, see, see you around, hopefully. Just walk yeah. out the front door. Uh, yeah, you go to turn and to walk out the front door, and the uh, three oldest daughters are standing in front of the door, uh, blocking your path. Um, and for some reason, they're just standing there staring at you. Uh, but you do manage to uh, get past them, um, and you hear them all giggle and slam the door behind you. Uh, to your left, you do see um, Irina and uh, Ismark um, just kind of standing about um not doing much um i guess i'm gonna approach i mean it is mark um just gonna kind of make my way up the road come up and 
say, uh, oh, hey, is Mark, Arena? Hey, how are you guys doing? Uh, hope, uh, hope the night wasn't too rough for you. Well, uh, we were woken up this morning to the sounds of a baby being born, and apparently it didn't have a soul. Irina just says very casually, thinking like, Jesus. And oh. I... That's really unfortunate. I, I, I feel for the mother, honestly. Yeah, well... Uh, it's Mark turns and he says, Well, honestly, she was, seemed to be the, less ups, the least upset out of everyone in the room, so... I guess, uh... Yeah. I guess oh, if you stay optimistic, anything can, anything can be positive. Little well, child's a gift, so uh, I think as long as she cherishes him, I, I don't think it'll be a problem. But uh, yeah, this uh, hits don't stop coming here, huh? Well, certainly an odd precursor for the day that we have coming up. I hear. Uh, yeah. uh, Ismark, Ismark uh, turns to Irina, and Irina says, I do believe we're going to be visiting the Abbey sometime today or tonight. Oh. Well. I wish you tons of luck with that. And, uh, Yugen's gonna kind of turn around and walk away. Irina says, I know you'll be there. Uh, yeah, try, try me. Just try me. I'm just gonna keep going. They're going to walk back over towards the Burgomaster's house here. Um, uh, Hexamer, you wake up uh, in your little camp area. Uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to do? Not really, no. He just kind of spends the... I mean, it, was in a, it wasn't a great night's sleep because he just saw a donkey man, gigantic half-scaled lady. Of course. Uh, but yeah, he just kind of wakes up fairly early, and he's just been kind of waiting for any signs of the other party members. Okay. Where's the base of this? Is this like this winding bit? This is the path, so that means like the lowest level is somewhere like there, right? That is about a hundred feet up, the, all the way down to the ground floor would be here, and then this goes up about a hundred or so feet. There's a very steep. Here. So I figure those lines were, were fucking marks. Yeah, each of the uh, the little line markers there is about a hundred or so feet. Okay, so yeah, he spent his morning making his way back down the hill and talking absentmindedly to the tentacle creature that never responds. <laughs> okay. Where did you end up? He's at the base of the hill. Oh, I got it. Okay. Okay. So, the plan so far with everybody was that we... Have you guys all gotten together yet to discuss going to the Abbey? I think we did that uh, last night, at least those of us who were in the Burgomaster's home. Okay. Um, so, Irina is going to come uh, knock on the door of the Burgomaster's house. Um, she's going to uh, kind of just peek her head in and say, uh, can anyone from Habeas Corvus, uh, meet outside here for a minute? Uh, I, I see Hexamer coming down the road. Uh, you can fucked off, but I'm sure I'll know where he is. She's yep. <laughs> okay. So, uh, is Mark turns to the three of you and says, uh, uh, Hexmer, are you joining them in this little huddle here? Okay. Ismark turns to you and says, Ah, well, you seem to uh, disappear very, rather quickly last night. Do you find out anything interesting for us? There's some shit going on. At Abby. Well, I think we, we kind of already knew that. <laughs> what did you did say? You, did you know that there was a half man donkey rolling around up there? And a gigantic <laughs> half scaled woman? 
straight down the middle. Ah. Oh. Horrifying. Interesting. I couldn't read their minds. There's like nothing there. But they do have some sort of power structure, which means they're intelligent. Because they seem to, I don't know, take the authority of some sort of abbot very seriously. Do you have any magic sight? Did you see anything? I didn't think to use it, honestly. I was just fascinated by the donkey man. I wonder if this abbot is the same figure that, as the priest that Dimitri was mentioning. I mean, I don't... Probably. Yeah. But I just have to go see, you, I guess. Texima, how safe do you think it is at the, the abbey? I tried to get their attention once I, they had a gate between me and them just to kind of see, but I don't think they saw me. Either that or they want to surprise us. Probably be a good time to find out. I, I would like to look up at the, the abbey to see what I can see with the Eldritch Sight. Uh, okay, so in the middle of the day, um, or it, it's it's very early morning still. You guys haven't really get, done a whole lot other than give birth to a soulless child. Um, but as you look up at the abbey, um, it's very calm. Um, and you do still see that bright light. It's not coming from any one particular spot whenever you're looking there. Um, it seems to come from a different room or a different area every time you look up there. Um, this time, it looks like it's appearing right in the middle of the courtyard. So, I still see the light um, up there. And it, it seems to be in this... It seems to be in the middle of the, the abbey. Was there a courtyard up there? Do you know? From what I can see, yeah, it seems to be a large, closed space. Do you think that now could be our chance to to see what's going on up there? Who this light might be? They seem more active at night, so I would say this would be at least be a good time to do some reconnaissance. Maybe they could. We could just knock. Maybe they'd open the gates for us. That is another plan. <laughs> what do you think, Bantam? I've been there once before, and to be honest with you, I'm not uh, too thirsty to get back in there. I've had bad luck with these things, but uh, I also a much larger part of me wants to get in there as soon as possible, so I vote to go. Where's Yugen? Should we go find him and uh, go up all as a group? Sounds good. I think we'll need his um, his strength if these creatures were to attack. Irina, you said that you saw Yugen? Uh, yeah, we told him that we were going to be going up to the Abbey at some point today, and he said, good luck with that, and then fucked up up north towards the pond area. You think you're still upset about your fight, Talison? Uh, Talison kind of looks saddened by this, but, and then he kind of sighs and says, uh, yes, I think so, but I, I don't know. I, you might need, need to be the one to do the talking. Um, I'll stand in the background because I'm probably not going to help the situation even just by being there. Well, he's very stubborn, so Phantom, you should come with us. He seems to like you the best. I haven't gotten that impression, but I'm... Yeah, I'll go. I'll try. He'll also be happy to see you. I don't think that Yugen knows that you're back. Yeah. Yes, that... Sulking gnome, yes. Let's go focus on him for a while, yes. <laughs> um, so I guess we start heading up towards the, the pond. Okay. So yeah, you guys um, 
very easily are able to make your way up north here. Um, Yugen, uh, what are you doing up here before they get to you? Well, I'm kind of uh, just kind of checking over the damage, trying to see if there's like any way to fix it, any like anything left that like an artifact or some kind of like like anything that would like repair the pond, if you will. Um, yeah. The altar and the gazebo are utterly destroyed. They were, it was all made out of wood and it's just, it was old as it was. Um, and the only reason it stood as long as it did is because the walls around it helped, uh, against the elements and, uh, just it being kind of a calm place. Um, it is completely uh, destroyed. I mean, you would probably be able to create a new uh, lake if you were to work, you know, landscaping it for a couple weeks, but nothing t nothing that's going to be a quick fix. Okay. Do, do I know that um, Irina's sword matched the Lord of Morning, the Morning Lord symbol. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was very similar. Okay, um, I'm assuming that we're moving up, and um, we don't see you again yet. I turned to Irina. Look, like, Irina, uh, when we get to the pond, can you just swirl your sword into the water, just to clear it off the check to see that it nothing will happen. I just want to see. Are you sure that she needs to be going near that water again? <laughs> yes, why, why doesn't Ismark take the sword and do that? I uh, don't think I will at all, and I don't think yeah. Irina will at all. I don't think <sighs> any of us are going towards that pond. We have a abbey to get to that doesn't sound like it's opening it gates to us exactly welcoming as it is. Well, let's find Yugen and then head up to the Abbey. Let's find the grouchy one. Let's get it. The grouchy one. <laughs> I, oh. I, I, yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. You uh, you guys find Yugen at the side of the pond, just kind of gazing into uh, this charred hole. Um and take this opportunity to see if you can come in with you and get your things in order and we'll head to the abbey whenever you guys want to you we can go during the daytime or you guys can go at nighttime whatever whatever you'd like or why not both um, um yeah talison's gonna just hang back he's gonna just kind of like sit down on the ground next to a rock here <laughs> and wait um i'm gonna oh, you're, you're gonna go? I'm gonna go with Talzin. Okay. I turned up Bantam and I kind of give like a little kind of thing. Um, are you gonna are you coming, Bantam, or no? I'm sorry. Where are we going? To you again? Yeah, I'll go to you again. Okay. Um, I I see you again, and I just kind of um just walk up casually. We're still some distance away, and I'm like, "Good morning, Yugen. Guess who we found?" Um, gonna kind of turn around and look at Persephone and kind of go, "Oh, good morning, Persephone." And uh, oh, hey, Bantam. I uh, I guess you didn't wisen up and run out of this band of idiots before uh, things got worse. Welcome I think, back. I mean, we with what? Four for four on uh, strawed encounters? I think we're doing pretty well for ourselves, considering. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're doing great. Completely great. And Yugen's just going to kind of turn back around and stare at the pond a little bit. Just uh, great. Fantastic work, really. Never-ending fun. Um, I, I I stand next to a little, a little bit away, like a couple feet away, and just kind of start looking at the pond too. And I just kind of talk to you again without looking at him. And I'm like, um, where'd you stay last night? We, you didn't come back to the Burkle Master's house. 
town's kind of nice. You uh, work a little bit, and uh, well, I'll let you sleep on the floor. <laughs> I'm sure that was nice. That was mm, honestly one of the better nights sleep I've had in a long time. Um, can I look at you again and see if anything is different about him? I mean, from your passive perception, even, you can tell that he's... Like, the girls didn't, like, braid his hair into knots or anything like that? Uh, can... no, nothing like that. Even if oh, they did, okay. he would have taken them out by now, I'd imagine. Yeah. I was just wondering why they giggled, so I was going to see if there was any indication. They, like, colored on his face or something, but... Um, and, uh... And so I'm like, I just kind of turned to you and I'm like, so Irina says that you don't want to come to the Abbey with us? No, Persephone, I, uh, I don't. I really don't. Why, why not, if I may ask? I, I don't know. I feel like kind of jinxed or hexed or something because... I, 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 no, I don't know. I'm just feeling like uh, things aren't going to get better from here, and I don't feel like I'm prepared for that. I mean, I feel like that's fair. It has been pretty traumatic uh, events. We almost died like twice in, what is it, two days? Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I, I completely understand that. Um, can I, I, I will say my piece and the rest is up to you, but I think that you would be even more upset if you didn't try to fight back. You said this town was a very nice town. And if we turn into like a Barovian and just kind of lay low and bend the knee to straw, then we will continue they will continue to live like this if not be wiped out we saw a birth today with a child with no soul uh that's the future of barovia death and soullessness could you live with yourself knowing that you didn't do everything you could to prevent such a fate can you live with yourself knowing that you made things worse for these people just by being here i mean look. is it is it worse? I mean, yeah. They loved this place. I mean, you saw how they reacted last night, and just because we stood near it, it's gone. The whole thing is gone. Everywhere we've, we've went has just been terrible, terrible times for the people around us. We went to Valakai. We, we upended an entire political system, and for what? To get half of the population murdered by a fucking tree? Are you serious? They were like, unhappy we're... even before we came. Yeah, but at least they were safe. And if anything, it would have had, they would have had more time if we had just stayed out of it. Things would be better. I, I, I <laughs> things are so different now. Lots has a lot has changed, Persephone. And like uh, Yugen holds out his hand in a like a centipede crawls out from under his skin and wraps around his fingers. It's like, a lot has changed. I don't know if I can, I don't know if I can keep doing this. It seems that every time we get closer to our goal, we just, we face death. And I mean, he's getting closer and closer every time. So inaction is what you want. For Strahd to continue on sucking the souls of everybody until there's a soulless population left and people like Irina and the mother we saw get snuffed out. No, Persephone, that's not what I want. What I want is to be stronger. I want to be able to defend what is mine and to know that I stand a chance against anything around here, but I don't. And I know that about myself. I mean, look at you. Every time we encounter the guy, he's obsessed with you. Absolutely obsessed. And her too. I kind of gesture back to Irina. And I get why her, but I don't get why you. I mean, 
God, out of all of us, you're the one who should want to stop. Sorry, what'd you say? Out of character. Uh-huh. Oh, I didn't get that last piece. Uh, I said you should be more scared than the rest of us. <laughs> oh, well, uh, I turn to you again and I just kind of give a, a a sad sigh and I and I and I just give him the shoulder and I'm just you again. It's scary as hell. Let me tell you. Did you not see what happened to me? I turned to Strahd when we were on the tree of Yester or the hill of Yester Hill. And I was petrified. And he took that as an act of aggression and made me bow when everything inside me wanted to rebel. I'm scared as hell, but I'm not gonna bend the knee. I rather die fighting knowing that I'm trying to make things better and hope that the ends justify the means. Yugen kind of looks down at his feet, and uh, he looks off into the distance. Uh, not really the distance, but he looks off to his side, and he just kind of, like, stares for a good minute. And then he, he nods his head, and he's like, Okay. For a little bit, I'll come along. But I'm if not you... happy about it. I, I think that's honorable and courageous of you to continue moving forward, truly. Because ever since we came to Barovia, I have not known fear like this. Not, not since I was a child. And this is perpetual hell. Um, I mean, my senses are numb and distorted from all this oppressive evil that I keep sensing. I. I, like, this was a beacon of hope, this little lake here. I, I felt that, that evil lesson, and look what happens. And he should pay for what he's done. And I will take that charge, and I will see it completed to the end. If not, I will die, I will die trying. You know what? I want to punch that stupid guy right in his face. I think just for that, that's worth coming along. But you stand in between me and Talison, okay? Yeah. That's, keep, that's between you two. Keep that guy away from me. Is he dangerous? And, uh, dangerous? No, I don't, I don't think he's dangerous. He's just a fool. And, uh, Gugan's just gonna kind of like turn away from him and just walk away towards uh towards I guess the cluster of the group and be like, alright, let's get up to that Abby Abby. Okay. All right guys, we are gonna take a quick break real quick. We have been playing for an hour and a half already, if you can even believe Ooh. that. No, yeah, I couldn't. We have been kicking ass. So, um wonderful role playing going on. Um <laughs> Let's go ahead and uh, if there's anything anybody needs to get um, as far as like adventuring gear or anything like that, um, the uh, townsfolk have the basic adventuring gear uh, and they'll sell it to you for uh, the basic uh, or the, the printed market value of the item. Um, so. If um. I need Sorry. health potions. <laughs> That's what I need. Okay. <clears throat> um, it, is it is it unsaid that I now have Zeth's weapon in my possession, like my old weapon? Like Zeth never occurred, right? Oh well, I mean, yeah, Zeth can come and go as he would like, but yes, you can have your weapon okay. back. Um, um, <laughs> this town now, mind you, that this town, um, they're blacksmith is nothing crazy. They don't silver anything here. Mm -hmm. um, I catch up to Bantam and um, I see that he's, I, I believe he's dirty and tattered and um, I, I offer um, like 10 gold for him to get some new robes. 
Uh, hello, thank you. Uh, what's this about? As a, as a gift uh, to show that you are very um, respected and treasured amongst the team, I'd like to offer to pay for some new robes. Maybe something with a, with a nice color to it. Mm, be still thinking, What? Go ahead. No? Yes, go ahead. No, 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 no. I was going to say, I'm thinking blue, personally, for the thunderclap, and I think that blue on blue, yeah. It's the least I could do. I'm quite a fan of the color blue as well. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, my lady. I just... <laughs> I, I take out my, my my coin purse and I give him ten gold and I give him a hard push on the back like a like a slap like a that a burly man would give him kind of knock him forward a little bit and I'm like maybe about to talk to the Baroness. Can I do a Constitution save to see if I don't fall over? <laughs> Should I roll a strength check? <laughs> yeah, roll a strength check for it and Phantom, roll your uh, Constitution check. Cool. And we'll see if Persephone... Oh my god, what if Persephone crit and, like, killed him? <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine? Let me see. Is it, is it a 20 plus my modifier? 20 plus my modifier? A d20. Yeah, yeah d20, yeah, that's what I'm at. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay, yeah, so you stand your ground, uh, uh, very proudly stand your ground, um, and, uh... I, I, I turn to, um, Bantam, and I'm like, and I, I walk away, turn around clapping, and walk away. I flex a tiny arm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, we're gonna go ahead and take, uh, a break, um think about anything you might need before we head up to the abbey and we are going to jump right in okay cool. peace thank you all we'll be right back i looked through my inventory and i already have adventuring gear so i think i'm good <laughs> nice uh, i just want health potions yeah we've been using a lot <laughs> i think I, I have like two left i had one at like the very beginning of this adventure, and I haven't had any other since. They're hard to come by in Barovia. <laughs> yeah. I wasn't there for that. <laughs> I didn't get to buy any. I don't remember where we got them. Um, I think it was just like random loot from like Lady Watcher's house, maybe, and. Uh, Maybe in the town of Barovia or something. Mm -hmm. That's fair. Yeah, how long do you think the break is? You think I got <laughs> time for uh, Resident Evil Village? No. <laughs> <laughs> the, the breaks are usually five to ten minutes long. Well, damn it. <laughs> that game is so good. <laughs> Is that the one with um, the lady with the hat? <laughs> yeah, uh, Dimitrisk, I think that's her name. I lady yeah, I just seen the images of her. I think. Yeah, it's. Uh, I haven't gotten to her part yet. I've seen her once, but I think I'm getting to it now. Gotcha. The opening sections of that game are really, really fucking cool. Like, it, it it's definitely beating RE7 for me, and that's saying something, because I think RE7 is an amazing game. It definitely had rave reviews. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's interesting stuff with the story. I just, I just kind of, I'm just kind of waiting around, seeing where it goes. So I didn't realize that uh, with this level up, 
I can add a third level spell, and Fireball and Fly are both available to me now. Oh, nice. Fireball is really good. I'm thinking about it. I want something that can uh, that can kill a vampire <laughs> because mm-hmm. I don't think we have anything that does that. You, you, we do. You can in D and D, you can still beat a vampire to death. Not really. You have to be able to. Um, you have to be able to put it in. Or I don't know if I need if I'm supposed to be or if I'm supposed to know this or not. But there are like I mean, two or three are- ways specifically that you're able to completely kill a vampire like you can make it like retreat but there's like super ultra specific ways that you can kill it vampire is not a common enemy in D&D but it is a higher level enemy in other campaigns so it's fine if you know about vampire stuff Strahd and the other characters in this campaign will have differing stats and conditions I think hopefully we're about to find something that can help us kill a vampire in the Abbey. <laughs> Didn't you guys fight vampires? Vampire spawns. Oh. Yeah. So they weren't like full on. Yeah, they weren't full blood. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I mean it's not a bad idea. Fireball definitely is gonna gonna like take you there, if you will. Can you uh, spell sculpt Fireball? That's a good question. Um, I don't think so. It has to be a what's it called? Spell attack. I mean, yeah, a spell attack. But then there's a there's a name for the kind of spell that it evocation. Can, evocation, yeah. Uh, so it's let me see here. I don't think it's Maybe, look at my. I think Fireball is an evocation spell. That would be gorgeous. I've heard nothing but horror stories about the mate getting a Fireball and fucking clearing the room of enemies and their party. Yeah, because Fireball is a nasty spell. Mm -hmm. Let me check the actual... Ability for sculpt. When you cast an evocation spell, it affects other creatures that you can see. You can choose a number of them equal to one plus the spell's level. Ooh. Ooh. That is, uh, thank you so much, Chris, for that. Um, I was just thinking about how you've been hesitant to cast a lot of your spells because of their AoE effect. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because um, now that I'm third level, I can sculpt it around pretty much our entire party. As long as we don't add a member. <laughs> yeah. I I wish I had a way to like push everybody back or to get me somewhere quickly away from everybody. I mean, fly is technically that, but if you're engaged with the enemy, it would count as a disengage. You used it to leave. That's what I kind of like about the thunder step spell because you teleport and then you do the AOE where you land. <laughs> I don't think I have that as an option. Yeah, it might only be for, like, warlocks, bards, rangers, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Man, I am looking ca- I am looking forward to playing my character in Icewind Dale, let me tell you. Me too. <laughs> um, I'm so excited. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, tomorrow I'm planning on hopefully finishing up your guys' player handouts, and then I'll be able to send them out to you guys, so... Uh, yours might take a little bit longer, Dustin, just because of what we talked about, but um, yeah, fair. we'll see. Once I get in the flow, usually, and on Saturdays, I'm not usually interrupted by anything. Um, mm-hmm. it, it goes by quick, so. 
Yeah, just let me know. I'm open to whenever. I want to ask how everyone's character is coming along, but I know I shouldn't. So, I've talked to everyone individually. Um, from what I gather, I think everyone has finalized their ideas. Um, now that I think they're just working on, you know, the, the last details. Um, and I do have to say that I'm, I, I just love everyone's ideas. Everyone had such great ideas. Um, they all fit the world surprisingly well, which I was surprised by. Um, and um, I'm also using your guys' ideas to wrap in a lot of stuff to tie it into the story um, cool. in different ways. So I'm super excited about that. Awesome. Can't wait. We have been talking about this Abbey for so, so, so long, and now we're finally here. <laughs> yeah, I'm really excited to get inside and mm -hmm. spelunk in that place. And spelunk? Mm -hmm. I, spelunk I'm wondering if we should fight stuff, or if they're going to be all good homunculi. Don't... Don't open up the first conversation with have at thee and you'll be fine. <laughs> I guess we'll just see. Hi. So there's also the option of getting Glyph of Warding, which stores a spell on a surface or an object that can be closed. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so that opens up the door for me to, like, put fly on, like, a whole bunch of scrolls, and then I could get everybody, like, a fly scroll. I could, like, just give people one-time use spells, essentially, with the glyph of warding. Couldn't you also engrave that onto an item of some kind and then recharge it? Not with this spell. Um, it's very specific that uh, you have to cast this and then... It's a single use. Um, maybe I could like talk with Donald about just warding the shit out of a single object, um, and then it, it it would expend charges. But covered uh, in that would take a while, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what glyph of warding does? Because I thought it was more like uh, an alarm kind of thing. Basically, like a, it was like a trap spell. So um, it's a super long description. So uh, when you cast a spell, you inscribe a glyph that later unleashes a magical effect. You inscribe it either on a surface uh, or within an object that can be closed, such as a book, a scroll, or treasure chest, to conceal the glyph. The glyph can cover an area no larger than 10 feet in diameter. If the surface of the object is moved more than, oh wait, no, never mind, moved more than 10 feet from where you cast it, it's broken. Yeah, you're right. Aha! No scrolls of fly for you. No. You just have to cast fireball on a door, or when they open it, it just fucking explodes. <laughs> I think that there's still a mechanic though for wizards and the like to create spell scrolls because, like, where do spell scrolls come from other than wizards? So, warlicks. That's right. Um, you would just need to work with Donald on that, I think. Yeah, Donald, I need to work with you on that. Okay. <laughs> Donald, get to it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, Donald. I don't know if you're yelling, but yeah, Donald. I'm sorry. Yeah, Donald. <laughs> yeah, Donald. Get it. I'm just having yeah. some peanuts while my friends fight about spells. You nut. I'm going to be eating an entire jar of peanut butter in front of you, Donald. What are you going to do about it? You don't want to know, baby. Oh, damn. <laughs> That's the good stuff. Fuck. 
<laughs> I fuck loud, I fuck often, and I fuck with the door open. He's <laughs> a little confused, but he's got the spirit. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, we're all officially back? Yes. Okay. I'm Beethoven. <laughs> That's not what I said! You silly bitch! <laughs> I love those movies as a kid. <laughs> oh, me too. Did you guys ever watch Benji? Yes. I loved Benji. It was so traumatic for me. I felt so sad for that dog. Homeward Bound? Anybody else uh, go to therapy because of that one? <laughs> Milo and Otis. Milo and Otis. Also Fluke. Oh, no, Dunstan Chexon. Bad backstory. Hey, don't don't you use Dunstan Chexon. You didn't watch Dunstan Chexon until you became a man. You calm down. I <laughs> I need to watch a bootleg version of that. <laughs> Wasn't it just on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> a lot of those well, a lot of those movies, they they don't nobody gives a shit about them. So like they just end up on YouTube because nobody's gonna take them down. It's like they're like abandoned wear, but for movies. So Dunstan checks in and Adam's Family Vacation is on there as well. And you can ask Nick about that one because I made Nick watch that one. <laughs> is Peppa Pig really seven feet tall? Yes. Okay. Oh, fuck yeah, she is. She's uh, terrifying. She's also hungry for bacon. Jesus. She's hungry for more than that. You know how fast a pig can eat a human body? Probably fat. Not oh God. I probably not as fast as your mom. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. Not I, fast enough to eat it through your mom in under a day. Yeah. There we go. Okay. All right. Let's I couldn't commit to the joke. I felt bad as I was saying it. That's okay. It's fine. It's all love. Let's get it. Are you guys ready? Yes. I just want to say, I hope oh, these people can be cured with lay on hands when it comes my to disease. God, I get off. that is not how lay on hands works, even a little bit. You know what? You don't know that. You don't know that. <laughs> you just told me I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Let me check here. Let me check here. <laughs> Where is it? <laughs> Janelle, stop antagonizing the DM. <laughs> it can cure disease or neutralize poison. I'm just saying. I hope I can use it. Oh You're healed. I'll just slap people. You're healed. You're healed. Oh. All right. So, is Mark and Irina? Uh, they head off and gather their things. Uh, they gather their provisions on in a side sack and they gather their weapons make sure that they're um, sharpened and ready just in case um, but they are dressed uh, in their normal battle attire but Ismark seems to be wearing a very nice shirt underneath his uh, leather uh, armor um, I don't know if it's still active, but I give myself, Irina, and Ismark half of a pie from Granny to get ten hem temporary hit points. Sure. Um, yeah, so you open up the um, pie tins and you swear they're still somehow a little bit warm. Very nice. Okay. Has everybody else uh, done what they need and gathered at the base of the mountain? Yep, good to go. How much did it cost me to get healing potions? Um, there weren't too many around, but there were two for sale, each for uh, about 150 gold each. 150 gold each? One person had two of them, and that's what they said. They said 150 each. Alright, never mind. <laughs> Sucks. Maybe you can work it out. 300 for both of them. No thanks. That still sucks. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk away from this one, I think. Okay. I want to sell my perfect pelts, or can I. Is that something I do in Valakai? 
You want to find somebody to buy them here? Yeah, if they want perfect pelts. This poor town? Yeah, um, everybody here who needs pelts will go out and get them. Okay. Yeah, they're a self-sustaining bunch. Okay. <clears throat> so, you guys find yourself uh, heading up the walkway here. Uh, it takes about a good, uh, better part of about an hour or so to make it up there. Um, did you guys want to go up during the daytime or at nighttime? I think we were heading up right after the previous okay, yeah, event. Yeah, I want to... Yeah, daytime. Take, I want to negotiate before nighttime comes around. Okay, so you guys head up there. Now, when I switch the map over, the map kind of turns this way. So it fits all on there. It's kind of weird. Sorry. But we find ourselves at the front gates of the Abbey of St. Markovia huge map here guys sorry um, now each one of these squares is 10 feet so this is actually um, correct now I'm gonna show you where we're going here sorry uh, this is the north gate here I know I don't know why it's there but it is Okay, yeah, so you all each find yourselves out here. Oops, sorry. All right. So I've already read uh, the Northgate description to you, I believe, twice now. Um, okay. When you each arrive at the gate here, um, the gate is closed all the way. And as you approach the gate here, you can hear what sounds like very loud snoring. Um, I'd like to look into in through the gate to see uh, to get a better sense of where the, the light is now that we're closer. Um, the light seems to be coming all the way from uh, inside the courtyard area here. Got it. Well, okay. um, do we do we knock? Announce our presence, or I'd say knock. Where's the bell on this thing? Uh, as you uh, each uh, begin to start talking to each other um, a familiar uh, couple faces to uh, tell us or to uh, Hexamer uh, show up right here right at the gate uh, the they both have their hoods on, but they jump up to attention, and Otto goes and kind of shoves the door, uh, the gate closed again, and he sticks his shovel into the door, and uh, underneath his cloak he says, All right, who is it? Who is it? I, I, I just kind of feel like, you know, we mean no harm, we mean no harm. My name is Persephone, and this is Habeas Corpus. Um, we come here in peace. Uh, 
uh, the uh, the large cloaked figure steps forward and she says what business have you here we come speaking we would come here looking for um, the head of the Abbey we have some business with him but also um, I'd like to make my um, presence known uh, in respect for the Abbey I'm a paladin of Helm they kind of look at each other and it says how many of there are you there are seven of us all right you stay right here Otto go on now fair enough she uh, takes a step back and leans up against the uh, the gate there and you see Otto get down on all fours and run off um, making uh, horse noises and he disappears into the gate here uh, Talison you see the uh, the light all the way out here um, for just a moment there's silence Otto comes running back and excuse me let me find where I'm at here is abbot the title of someone who heads an abbey yes oh okay 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 so you're gonna have to excuse me here I gotta follow this along pretty crazy here and what uh, is an abbey is it a church it's like a downgrade <laughs> monastery oh monastery okay all right so Otto and Zig uh, this uh, other hooded figure here stepped forward and uh, open up the gates and they step back and uh, Otto says all right in with a lot of you thank you everyone else needs to put their character on the map <laughs> As you guys pass this uh, this second hooded figure there, um, she kind of hides her face from each of you very intentionally. Um, okay. As you walk in, immediately to your uh, left here, or excuse me, to your right, um, stunted pine trees grow out of the rocky earth in the graveyard near the foundation of the abbey's north wing. The windows of the structure are cracked panes of leaded glass. Ancient gravestones burnt from a thin crust of snow in the yard. Oh, excuse me. Ancient gravestones burst from a thin crust of snow in the yard. Beyond the low wall that surrounds the graveyard, the ground falls away. The village lies 400 feet below and the view is breathtaking. I mentioned um, that to the, the two figures. It is quite a nice view you have up here, isn't it? Uh, they, neither of them pay you any heat. Otto kind of uh, growls at you, but neither of them pay you any mind. Okay. Give me just a moment here. So... You are led in through uh, this road here that leads to the front of this uh, 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 building. Uh, and you see that the front door is all the way here. Otto and the other hooded figure uh, carry you or uh, uh, follow you all the way to that location. Are Irena and Ismark staying behind? Uh, no, they're they're also coming with you. I just haven't oh, okay. gotten them together yet. 
Irina and Ismark are joining you in this adventure. Okay. The Abbey Entrance. A 15-foot-high curtain wall joins the Abbey's two wings. Beneath its battlements, two guards stand at attention, their features obscured by fog. Below them, set into the wall, is a pair of 10-foot-tall wooden doors, reinforced with bands of steel. To the right of these doors, mounted on the wall, is a tarnished copper plaque. The plaque bears the Abbey's name, under which appears the words, May Her Light Cure All Illness. I give a, I look up and I know that the guards are obscured, but I'm like, hello, good morning. Um, you look up uh, at the guards and you holler to them um, and they do not move or shift at all. Because with your passive perception, you've noticed that these guards are actually just scarecrows wearing corroded chain mail shirts. Being held up by a rusted spear. The uh, the bright light that uh, that you were following um, is uh, has moved um, away from this area, but um, the gate is open, and you are uh, able to walk in if you'd like. I walk in. Okay. I will follow Persephone. <laughs> um, can I tell where the light has gone? We all follow. Um, now that you're here, um, and kind of looking around, you can't quite see where it's gone. The fog is very heavy here, um, and it's almost as if your attentions can't, uh, you're keeping your attentions close to yourself as you explore this kind of new area. Um, in your immediate area, you do not see, um, kind of where they've gone. Interesting. The, the light is no longer here in this area. I saw them, but now that they've disappeared. I didn't realize that St. Markovia was a woman. If that's what the plaque is referring to. I was thinking the same thing. I got the sense that St. Markovia was a man. Pigs. Um, <clears throat> okay. Um, the thick fog that fills the courtyard swirls as if eager to escape. The courtyard is surrounded by a 15 foot high curtain wall on which stand several guards with their backs to you, or it seemed at first. It's clear now that these guards are nearly scarecrows. Wooden doors to the north and east lead to the abbey's two wings. In the center of the courtyard is a stone well fitted with an iron winch to which a rope and bucket are attached along the perimeter tucked under the overhanging wall are several stone sheds with padlocked wooden doors as well as three shallow alcoves that contain wooden troughs two wooden posts pounded into the rocky earth have iron rings bolted to them and chained to one of them is a short humanoid with bat wings and spider mandibles the quiet is shattered by horrible screaming coming from the sheds. Where was this humanoid that was po on the post? Uh, so this is the um, well just there in the center. Uh, and the post is over here on the side. Um, I would definitely say that uh, Talison would like to run up. Um, should we go check on this poor creature? I think so, but keep your distance. Um, so, yeah, we'll cautiously approach the the humanoid that is on the post. Okay. Are our hosts still here, or did they did they disappear? Otto and the other, um, they, oh, sorry, I'm on the wrong one. Hold on. 
they followed you to here. Um, they are paying no mind to anything else going on. Um, and they turn and they, um, they let you guys back here now. They say, you wait here in the courtyard and the abbot will be with you shortly. And, uh, the both of them, uh, enter into this, uh, door here and, uh, kind of disappear. As you guys head over to this area, the tethering post, iron rings, uh, the creature chained to the post flaps its leathery wings and takes to the air, but doesn't get far before its chains go taut. She flutters about madly, screaming nonsense. Let me, uh, bring up, hold on. Uh, I'm taking a look at the the creature. Can I tell anything magical from it? Um, no, there does not appear to be anything magical um, going on here. You said mandibles, like so they could bite me. Uh, yeah, probably. Oh, okay, I'm not getting close. It's a half bat, half spider, human female. And she is shrieking and uh, chained to the post there. Hexamer, what are you doing? Looking down this well. Okay. Um, give me just a second here. Okay, so yeah, you peek into the well and roll a dexterity saving throw. It's got a welligator. Sixteen? <laughs> yep. Okay. 16 was just enough to pull back as uh, this creature um, spider crawls up the side of the uh, inside of the well um, coming out from the darkness um, this uh, frog like appendage uh, flips out and just barely misses you um, and as it scuttles back down you see uh, this creature uh it's about five feet tall and has a wiry spindly build they have three red spider eyes on the right side of their face while the left side appears human they have a frog foot in place of its left hand and a taloned crow's foot where his right foot should be uh <laughs> after taking a swipe at you it just whew, you hear it disappear underneath the water of the well just whoosh, whoosh, Nothing good ever came. Okay. Um, I'm trying to see what those are. Um, along this wall here, as you guys um, can see, are uh, three horse troughs that are badly rotted and fallen apart. Um, they don't hold water. And the... Down here on this side. Uh, it would be, I guess, over here for you guys. The twelve uh, on the side. Those are the sheds, right? Yes. Uh, you hear horrible shrieking and uh, horrible animal noises coming from the uh, the three chicken shacks or chicken sheds. Chicken what? Would any of you like to investigate? Um, I just the bat uh, creature. It through passive perception or anything like that. Can I tell if it was like being like beat, like chained up to be beaten, or if there's a difference? Like it was just chained up to get sun. Whatever uh, sun there is. Make a medicine check. Yep, 
This creature okay. looks like it has been chained here its entire life. Mm. Okay. This is strange. I, I've never seen anything quite like this. Um, is anybody uh, checking out this part over here? The screams? Or are we just ignoring that? Um, oh, I thought the bat creature was screaming. The bat creature is screaming. But there's also Sorry, screams all, coming from over here. They're all I, screaming. <laughs> can I tell um, the, I like the range the flying creature has? Like, Can I walk between the flying creature and like yeah. not get close to the shafts or the the cages. Yeah, you can you can make it over there. I just want to bypass it, not trying to be within range of touch. Yeah, the farthest the closest she can get is there. Okay, I take a look. Okay. Uh, this shed holds the shattered remains of several chicken coops. Shackled to the back wall is a wretched humanoid with bestial deformities. You find one in this one and this one all three of the ones on this wall and you hear screams from all three or all four and five of the uh, cages to your other side each one of them houses a monstrosity that is the seeming combination of three or four different uh, animals uh, creatures um, but they all seem to be natural deformities. So they, they range in age and, uh, size. Um, most of them are emaciated and, uh, the chains that hold them, uh, just scars and, and, and blood coming from, where they're just yanking and pulling on them. Um, none of them are at all coherent. Are there um, asylums outside of Barovia? Do we know what an asylum is? Probably. Not to this okay. extent. This is massive. Right. I, I was going to say... Um, home for mutants. What, Hexmer? I was going to say, it's just a home for mutants. Mm -hmm. A really bad home. I, I was going to come back over towards the well by Hexmer and Bantam. You two, do, have you seen the the poor creatures here? Have you seen ever seen anything like this in your, your time? Not quite like this. Only in nightmares. Uh, are any of them coherent? Do any of them have lights on inside? No. No, they, they don't. And and there's nothing magical that I can detect about them either. They look natural. Don, you said they are natural. Like, these are natural born like this. There's nothing that warped these from something else into something like this. Right. It doesn't appear... They, they don't, don't appear to be stitched, stitched together. together. Uh, uh, the, transition the transition between, between like, a like humanoid, humanoid skin, skin and, and their, their animal... Their, Bits, bits. Uh, uh, looks, looks very, very natural. natural. It doesn't look like it was done with magic. You don't sense any kind of magic foulness here. I wonder if the people of Crest know about this. They definitely hear the screaming every night. True. Yeah, they don't seem to challenge that. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna walk up to Talus and I'm gonna whisper out of the side of my mouth, like, did this scarecrow look at all familiar to you as we passed through the gates? I I was going to take a closer look at these ones, too, and so I'd like to go in, up and take a closer look at wherever the scarecrows are. Where were they? Uh, they're they're right. on top of these here. On um, where? Next to the gate here. Ah, got it. On top oh, of like outside? Let's see here. They would be on top of the inner gatehouse. Uh, the 
yeah, so if you just go up to one of those, um, it's very easy to um, explore. Uh, these two empty buildings help support the curtain wall that encloses the courtyard. The wooden doors that lead to them um, are unlocked. Uh, yeah, when you get in there, you can see that these um, scarecrows um, are uh, placed kind of haphazardly, and they're made to look a little bit more, I wouldn't say whimsical, but they got, like, some of them have, like, gloves. Um, there's about, there's probably about four of them across the wall in total that you finally see. Um, and some of them um, seem to have uh, kind of crudely drawn faces on them. Um, uh, they they don't seem at all magical. Um, they are just literally old rusted armor being held up by spears. These are very different from the, the scarecrow that we've known before, Bantam. So you don't think they have the same author? <laughs> can you can you author a scarecrow? The same I, person? I don't think so. Um, you recall, you may recall that all these scarecrows that we fought in the past had um, blood and guts in them. Um, I, I I go searching for Bantam. And I go up to him and I ask him, um, can you show us where you looked through the abbey and were spotted and witnessed some of these horrors? I was wondering the same thing. Obviously don't, obviously don't leave the courtyard, but like, do you remember which wing it was? Cole? Uh, metagame? Absolutely not. Uh. <laughs> it would have been. It actually would have been one of these along the wall here, because you didn't make it all the way up the wall. Um. So it would have been probably, most likely, one of the three along this wall here. We can't see your indicator. Oh, I'm on the wrong thing again. The size. Can you see it now? Yeah. So yeah, it would have oh. been one of those three there. Okay. Uh, I believe... I'm going to put a finger in my mouth and like put it up to the wind. Probably one of those, and I'm just going to like beckon to those three little coops. Okay. Well, they certainly match the description that you didn't mention to us. I have done the reconnaissance, so if you'd like to investigate further, be my guest. But I'll investigate those from over here. No worries. Okay. All right, folks. So, as you are all uh, wandering about the screams start to kind of die down uh, towards this size here and out of the door comes uh, your two friends here Beep. and a new friend this man exits the door with gravitas hello honored friends and guests please join me won't you he's wearing these I... long blue and white robes he... is there a, a handout for this guy uh, I do believe so let me see um I I nudge uh, Talison to kind of give the indication to um, see if this is the person with the bright soul. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm always on the lookout for for Eldritch sight. <laughs> is this the guy? 
Um, this is the guy, yes. So, uh, interestingly enough, um, as uh, I don't have a... It doesn't have a picture of him in the hands out. Oh. Sad. But, anyways, he's, uh, he's a very gaunt Barovian man, uh, with almost that, uh, kind of like a light blue sad hue to him at all times, uh, even, even here. Um, but his cloak, uh, his priestly robes that he wears reach all the way to the ground. His sleeves, um, just billowing in the wind. His headpiece is kind of like this, uh, it goes up in the back and out to the sides, uh, and he's very kind of over the top, um, and he, uh, again, has you all kind of gather around, um, and he says, Oh, yes, to who do I give the honor of having at my abbey today? He walks up to Talison and he reaches out and grabs your hand, um, and kneels down and kisses the back of your hand, and he says, Please, tell me your name. Good sir, my name is Talison, Mr. Lath. Talison, Mr. Lath, an absolute honor. He turns uh, with a sweeping motion and goes up to Bantam uh, and does the same, uh, getting down uh, on one knee to your level and to grab your hand and uh, kind of give the back of it a kiss. And he says, to who do I owe the honor? Uh, Bantam or Propo? Bantam or Propo! Uh, and again, he stands and just to each one of you, he approaches. Yugen, the same. He reaches out for your hand, uh, uh, taking it without even uh, asking and ki kissing the back of your hand. Uh, and uh, says, please, your name. Who are you? Um, my name's Yugen. Nice to meet you. Yugen, nice to meet you. It's been very... Very honored to meet you. Uh, he kind of turns and s spins around and uh, walks over uh, to Persephone and Hexamer um, and kind of grabs both of your hands uh, and kind of kneels down and kind of curtsies at you both and says, Please, your names. I telepathically contact Persephone and say, I don't know if, I sh if we should give these, this guy our names. I didn't give him my full name. <laughs> it's a player talk. I uh, I link back to him and I'm like, I don't think he's a fairy. I don't think he can steal our names. I'm gonna speak what up. I'm gonna say, I'm... oh, <laughs> they're being psychic. Session over. Um, I just... Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No. I I tell him I'm Persephone the Gentle. I introduce myself as Hexmer. What a delight. Oh, thank you all for joining me. Please, won't you come and sit? Um, and he with f kind of flips around and uh, walks through the uh, doors here and enters the, uh, the door. I, uh, I, I guess I'm right next to Bantam and, uh, And I just kind of turn real quick, and I'm just like, "Do you think he sucks souls out of people? That's why he's so happy." I. <laughs> That's a possibility. Uh, I. <laughs> I it's the, that that would be my best guess. Uh... <laughs> I I I, I um... I just nod my head and, and just walk through the door. <laughs> um, you can go. I give a, I give a nod for the two um, <laughs> attendants, Otto and the girl. I'm gonna give a nod. Walk, walk by him, like behind Persephone, and like turn to Bath and be like, "Pile of sunshine, that one, huh?" Just keep going. Like All Persephone right. or our nameless Doctor Strange love. Eh, I don't clarify. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, as you enter 
the main hall. Gentle sounding music trickles down from above, played on a single stringed instrument by some unseen master. The ground floor is one large 50 foot square room with arched leaded glass windows. A cauldron sits on an iron rack above a fire in the hearth, while above the fireplace mantle hangs a golden disc engraved with the symbol of the sun. In one corner, a wooden staircase climbs to the upper level, while in another corner, a stone staircase descends into darkness. Several stairs surround a wooden table, excuse me, several chairs surround a wooden table that stretches nearly the length of the room. Wooden dishware and golden candelabras are neatly arranged on the table, standing behind, uh, standing behind, which is a young woman with alabaster skin dressed in a torn and soiled red dress. Let me show you. She That's is, a painting? Uh, there is a woman sitting at the table okay. just there. Okay. Um, her auburn hair is neatly bundled as to not to touch her soft shoulders. She seems lost in her own thoughts. Uh, and this is a little bit about the uh, abbot, a handsome young man in a brown monk's ro oh, excuse, a blue monk's robe, gently takes the woman by her hand. A painted wooden holy symbol that depicts the sun hangs from a chain around his neck. He moves with the grace of a saint. So he steps over and begins to dance with this woman. And he's a young man. He looks young. Yes. Is an she energy vampire. Okay. What did you ask, X-Men? Is she cognitive for the dance? Like, is she, like, dancing with him, or is she being puppeted? Um, <laughs> she seems to be following along pretty well. She seems to be, uh, she maybe stumbles every once in a while, but she seems to be able to keep up with him. Forgive us, sir, but we aren't intruding, are we? Oh, absolutely not, actually. You're just in time. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to speak up, but I'm going to say, uh, Gracious host, uh, I'm so sorry. We haven't caught your name, but you know all of ours. Oh, the... The wonderful family I have here. They call me the abbot. Uh, I carry over this uh, abbey for many years now. I'm sure you've had the pleasure of meeting my uh, gate guards, Otto and Siegfried. Siegfried. And that's what that that's what your residents here call you. But what what do your parents or the law call you? Do you have a given name? I've been here for so long, I've... Guess I've only gone by the abbot. And I think I like that. How would you describe your block here, abbot? <laughs> um, he is... Uh, he kind of slows down and stops. Um, and he uh, sets the, um, the girl back down in the chair... Um, and she uh, sits down very carefully um, and her tattered red dress um, she kind of uh, tries to pull up one of the sleeves um, and she is uh, wearing a um, kind of a, like a a red veil um, but it's pretty torn up and uh, it doesn't look very good uh, what did you ask Hexmer? I asked how would he describe his flock, like his people here, the others that live here. How would he describe his what now? His, like, I, he asked how would he describe his flock, because, like, his flock, like, his congregation, the other people who live in the monastery, because oh. if he's the abbot, he's their father to some extent, is he their leader, maker, biological? I see, yes. Well, the family that I have here... Uh, goes back all the way from when I first took over the abbey. Uh, everyone that you see here that is in my care is part of the Bellevue family. 
quite a tragic story, really. Do you have a moment for such a tragic story? I'm going to uh, hop up in this chair. Very quickly. <laughs> yes. Um, as you guys kind of approach the table, the chairs kind of move out to, uh, at the uh, the movement of his hands. Um, and the abbot claps his hands and this feast appears in front of you. This feast like you've never seen. Well, since, you know, the last time you guys found that feast. But that was different. Um, you can immediately <laughs> steps away from the table. <laughs> Um, but this this is more uh, it's not glamorous food um, it's hearty food it's stuff that it just there's nothing showy about it like it's just a stew that is just potatoes and and carrots and beef it's like a commoner's food yeah it's, it's a heart oh but it smells good uh, and there's a um, a pot a chicken pot pie. Um, very rustic food. Um, it gives you more of a okay, we're just gonna sit down and eat feeling more than someone's trying to drag us in. Like, it, it doesn't give you the same feeling like Strahd dinners did. Um, but the abbot just easy as, easy as anything uh, magically creates this feast on the table. And he says, oh yes, well... Um, and he grabs a uh, cup off of the table um, and pours himself a, a, a thing of wine and says, uh, The family, the Bellevue family, yes. Uh, one of the many sad stories here at the Abbot. Uh, um, and you see him drink um, the wine very slowly. The Bellevue family... One of the families that was, came here looking for help. Their son, born with a tail, of course. Long, long ago, they brought him here. And, well, it turns out that everyone in the family had started to give birth to these animal creatures. Um... It seems that their family was cursed long, long ago. Uh, as their children started coming here, well, uh, the Abbey started to get a little out of control. Uh, and these creatures just kind of started to take over. No other uh, patients here at the Abbey would stay um, except for these Bellevue's. Eventually, they. You go ahead. Can I roll to see if he's telling the truth? Uh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and roll a uh, insight check. I would also like to roll. So. Mm -hmm. Can we all just roll it? <laughs> yeah, you all just oh, kind really? of look at each other with this kind of look on your face, like, "What is this guy talking about?" Everybody's like, "Bullshit." Five. Ten. <laughs> I was gonna say Talison's listening pretty listening to this pretty enwrapped, so <laughs> Yeah. Um I would say Talison and Yugen, uh you guys don't believe him. This is this is crazy. Uh, mm. something's going on here. He's not telling the truth. The other three of you, you believe that this guy is telling you one hundred percent the truth. Uh, and he continues to say, well, long story short, they, they ran out the last, uh, tenants, if you will, and it was my job to step in to this forsaken place and take care of them myself. What a very kind gesture. Um, may I ask, where did you come from? <clears throat> I came from a far away land, brought here by those Vistani. They said that the Abbey needed help. This was very, very long ago. 
And and how old are you? You look so young, but this couldn't have been that long ago, could it? Oh, my dear, you're so sweet. He um, stands um, and uh, makes his way around to the side of the room in kind of this swooping, flowing motion. Um, And he turns to you and says, I have... I have a favor to ask of of you all here, if 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 you w- wouldn't happen to uh, be able to help. And um, please carry on. We we'd like to hear your request. We are coming to help, so. Oh yes. Well, I was hoping you could give me some news. I don't make it down. To to the village very often, but I have caught horrible word that the Burgomaster's son has met with an ill fate and has died. Please tell me this isn't true. Um, unfortunately it seems you are correct. I do not know the manner in which he had passed, but, um, are you familiar with him? Are you friends? The last of the Kreskov line. The bloodline shall die with him. Oh, the tragedy. Surely it would show discourse throughout the entire town. Perhaps I could do something. I tell you what. The Baroness. Surely she's got connections or, or somebody that she knows that can make me a wedding dress. Do you know somebody, uh, the Baroness, do you know her? Do you think you could ask her for me? What are your measurements? He, uh, turns around and does kind of a all the, uh, 360 motion. He says, I'm very flattered, but unfortunately it's not for me. Not this time. Um, and he, uh, makes his way back, um, around the room. Um, and he lifts uh, the hand of the uh, woman up um, and she lifts with a kind of grace and she bows um, to you um, and uh, he says it's for this beauty here uh, Is she oh. and who might this beauty be who is your lovely companion oh this this is not my companion. No, this companion here. I've created her for Lord Strahd. Fuck. Mm. Open fire! <laughs> Everybody be I, cool. I have to take pee real quick. I'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, discuss amongst uh. yourselves. Uh. He held that. Years. He held that too. He probably had to pee for a while. Yeah, if he didn't have to pee, I don't know if we would have got that. <laughs> no. Uh, He's like, uh, uh, this is Strahd's cousin. I gotta go. I'll be right back. <laughs> Did he meet Irina? Yeah, we're the uh, first He's supposed. Yeah. They're supposed to be on the board. Yeah, they're supposed to be with us, but Donald hasn't mentioned them. Um. I'm really interested to see what he thinks of Irina. So, I think maybe he's taking parts of these people to build the perfect woman to give to Strahd? I want her for my own. Like a weird replication of Irina? Yeah, do... I gotta see if this woman looks all like Irina. Does anybody... She has that veil. Hmm. Does anybody want to want to talk about? Because uh, like I, I don't I don't remember how much uh, do we know about Strahd's sister? 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 I don't think she has. Oh, sorry, 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 lover, lover, not not sister. Oh my god, I got that so wrong. Holy shit! <laughs> <God. laughs> um, Real Game of Thrones up in here. My we, bad. We oh, heard the story from Madame Ava, I believe, didn't we? Um. Yeah. Yeah. The the one about it's his it's brother. Yeah. Well, that he told us himself, also. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so she ran off with his brother. 
I think they were engaged. They were engaged, yeah. And then, and then he killed them. Well, he killed Sergei, and um, he, because he was vying for uh, Tatiana's love. It's Tatiana, right? I think so. Uh, yeah. Um, but she threw herself off the cliff at Castle Ravenloft, I think. Okay, all right. I just wanted to get caught back up. Oh my god. And then sister. He was reborn, or her spirit was reborn into Irina, and we think that this has happened many, many times throughout the ages, and that Irina is just the latest reincarnation of her. This okay. guy has to be stealing souls. <laughs> you are obsessed with that. <laughs> I mean, it stands to reason. He's all glowy. Did you? Did you guys? I mean, did you guys ask like? What we're supposed to be doing here for the Burgomaster? Because I, I wasn't. You there, don't know. So. You don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I'm asking like outside of game. Oh. Wait, what? Uh, he asked us um, to see if they could provide help to the town. Basically, the Baroness wanted us to talk to the Abbot to see if they could help get her son back. Resurrect him. It's been seven days since he died. Um. Yeah. And. Uh, what was I going to say? Um, what what I've seen about the the sparks of life so far is that it's it's an internal thing, like it's a it's a you know a state. A, a, you know, when you find something that excites you or that that brings you love or that you know that's what sparks it. And so people that don't have it just ha don't have that in their life, but they can get it, or people can lose the spark. So. I don't know if that's something that can necessarily be like sucked out, I guess, other than like just being devoid of happiness or whatever. Okay. All right. Did you guys talk about anything good while I was gone? Yeah. Nope. We, we read your off. notes. We know everything. Just yeah. We just went back and re watched the Twitch stream, so now we're all caught up. Okay, cool. Yeah. Good. Good. We know the donkey is strong. Oh, <laughs> why'd you put away? The donkey, man. Run. Uh, Cole, I think you had something you wanted to do when Donald got back. Uh, yeah, was... Underwave. <laughs> you, you, want, you wanted to look at uh, the, the bride. Yes, okay, yes. Uh, I like to... So, does, does she have the veil all the way over her face? There's no visual information I can glean roll from looking a, at her. Roll a perception check, Bantam. Aladon, thanks for the bits, girl. I thank you. I appreciate it. We just You're got some bits, y'all. Nice bits, dude. Nice fucking bits. Yeah, um, she's got... <laughs> you can see her face underneath the veil. Um, her face is beautiful. Gorgeous. Um, but it seems like she's kind of wearing a lot of makeup. Is all. Hmm. During all of this commotion, you can kind of kind of look around for Irina and Ismark. I'm sorry. Like I said, they are with you guys. I just haven't put them on there. I mean, did the Abbot like respond any differently to Irina than to any of us? He didn't even ask her a name. So fuck those two. <laughs> Irina, you're hideous. <laughs> Um, no, he would not have reacted uh, any different. So much for being a straw boy. What the? Well, maybe if Strahd gets laid, he won't attack villages anymore. I mean, if he can... Oh, maybe. maybe he cursed the family. I don't know. Damn, you know what? <laughs> Persephone is, like, super, super paranoid of this guy. I mean, there are other evil forces out there. I mean, uh, Bobby or Bobble I Saga, I guess. I I mean, do I do I sense any holiness, any less evil coming from him? Um, uh, don't you have a spell or something? Good and evil. Detect evil. Uh, <laughs> protection from good and evil. Oh, you don't have detect good and evil? Um, hold on. I do have the ability zone of truth. Not that we need that. Maybe. So from mm -hmm. this, just from where you are here, 
Um, Talison, the light is coming from him. It is still shining very bright. Um, if you look with your Eldritch Sight, it's almost blinding. Um, um, I have the scale Divine Sense. I can um, sense anything that is Celestial Fiend Undead that is not behind total cover. <laughs> okay. Do you want to use that? Yeah. <laughs> okay, give me just a second. For initiative. Don't say that. <laughs> kicks down the wall. All I'm doing it. is like testing points. Like, why, why are you doubting me? <laughs> That's why I haven't read his mind. I don't know if things can tell when I'm probing. But I, I think some things can tell. It just depends. <laughs> Whatever you do, just don't look at the Twitch channel. Is Mage Hand visible or invisible? Visible. Visible. It's skeletal. It's a skeletal hand. Oh, that's right. Talk about it. Here, it, it's skeletal. I totally forgot. You can see it. Um. Okay. So, Janelle, you're casting that? Um. I detect good and evil until the end of my next turn. You can sense anything affected by the hollow spell or known location of any celestial being undead within 60 feet that's not behind total cover. Okay. Yeah. Uh. Oh. Sorry, guys. We're gonna die here. <laughs> it had to happen somewhere. Werewolves of London. Throw you can, you can throw that werewolf potion at it. Make sure it hits his mouth. Okay. No, no, so that's like a just force it down his throat. Oh um, no, dang, really? The uh, yeah. the abbot um, comes around to the uh, to the side here, and uh, he says, um, "Well, I would greatly appreciate if." You could bring that wedding dress here, uh, post haste. Uh, I would love. I... Don't go ahead, sorry. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, he just kind of is floating about the room, and he just says, "I would love to be able to present my gift as soon as possible." Uh, I I um, quickly kind of jump to and say, um, "Then let us pick off post haste. We, we will do what we can, and we'll report back to you." Okay. Um, you Yugen's actually gonna kind of like look at him for a minute and be like, "So you, the, a bride for Strahd? Like you're just gonna invite him here and?" Oh yes. Oh yes, I'm quite excited about his arrival. He's on his way. Of course he is. <laughs> Um, yeah, so we'll we'll pop down to the village, grab that dress for you, and you know what? We'll be right back. Honestly, honestly, do you need to speed up anything else? Uh, uh, that's very kind of you, but no, I have everything else I need, and... Uh... Um, I, I chime in. It seems that the lovely ladies in red are, is a red wedding dress traditional for Strahd, or is it the traditional white Oh, I'll leave that entirely up to you. I'm not, I guess, a man of tradition, if you will. Um, he gets to uh, here and he stops and looks down at um, Irina's sword at her hand, uh, side. Um, and he says, he looks at her and says, Well, may the morning lord be with you as well. And he continues to... Uh, kind of spin about the room um and he gets to about here um and all of a sudden the abbey is completely engulfed in this cacophony of screams yeah. and uh yelling as the bell starts to chime what? What is well, that? Well, that about? must be our cue to head back down to the village. 
Oh yeah, we should, we should, we should, we should not waste time. Honestly, mm -hmm. like if he's in pain, like my passive perception picks up that he's in pain from this. Pain? Like from this cacop? Oh wait, the scream. abbot's not screaming. The other people are. Everybody is. Uh, no, no, no. You hear screams and animal noises coming from throughout the abbey. Um, as the bell starts to chime. Okay. Um, before I leave, I, I like, does the bell continue to ring, or can I ask him what causes the the Bellevue family to react to such a way to the bell? Uh, the abbot says, "Oh, well, that's an easy one. It's feeding time." <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll leave it to it then. Um, he uh, walks to the uh, the door here and actually uh, kind of holds it open for all of you. Um, the sound is still echoing throughout the courtyard of the bell and the uh, the ravenous animal noises. Oh God! Um, I turn and I um give a a handshake to the abbot. Thank you for your time. He uh, grabs your hand with both hands and says, thank you very much. Your holy light was so welcome here. Thank you. Okay, let's, uh, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's zip out of here so fast. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, as you guys all head out, the abbot um, follows you to this door here, but then uh, disappears um, after you guys leave the door here. Um, Any sign of his two guards? Or the, you know, the other two? Uh, they stayed behind. All right. They're still down this way here. At a game, or actually, you know what? As we go down, like make our way down, I, I turn to the rest of the team. Or actually, Hexamore, did you tell us about your encounter with the two of them? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I, I turn to them and um, and I secretly whisper as we like get far away from the Abbey. Um, do you think that they were sneaking off to like get? I kidnap people to feed the the Bellevue family, or where do you think they get their resources? Mm -hmm. Where do you think they get the food? Sounds like we're he making didn't... a second trip at nightfall. He just spawned an entire feast in front of you, Persephone. I don't. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, as we're walking down the road, I would like to also ask Ismark. Uh, and Irina. Yes. Have you heard of the Bellevue family? Is what he was saying true? No. no it's, it's not anything I know of. Uh, Irina, this doesn't really sound like anything you would know about. She kind of just looks at you like, I have no idea. Why would the father send you here, Irina? Why do you think he... Good. Perhaps I can answer that. Um, the abbot is celestial. He is a celestial being. And I don't know what has perverted his mind to follow Strahd, but maybe over time he has changed. Uh, what causes a celestial to do that? I don't really know much about celestials at, um, as myself. I don't know. Are they supposed to be holy or are they evil celestials? Mm, I think they're evil celestials. I think celestials aren't inherently evil, but there are celestials like, that have goals that can be have negative impact. Like <laughs> aren't Asimar? Yeah. Asimar celestials? Asimir? Their oh, celestial, um, like, lineage. Well, they can fall, for sure. It's gotta be an exchange, right? Strong has to be giving him something. I mean, that would mean that 
he's either done this before or he's out for something now. Maybe the Velvie family tried to rise up against Strahd and uh, he placed the curse upon them and uh, the abbot is torturing them or they're his playthings or his little personal army. It's probably just as likely that Strahd has, has taken the abbot as his thrall if he's been here for so long. He was brought here the same way we were, so I don't know. Are we gonna really gonna go get this dress? <laughs> that are really bad. No. Go. Um. I have a bad feeling too. Sorry. Go ahead, Donald. Oh no, I wasn't. Um, I was gonna say, um, as you all are. Um, out here, you start to um, uh, as you're speaking to each other. Um, the noises of the animal, the animal noises start to die down, uh, a little bit. Um, they never fully stop, but they die down to where, um, you can kind of start to gather your thoughts again. Um, and from this area over here, okay, um, from the second floor of this building here. Um, I don't see your indicator. Uh, it's from this building oh, over here. Okay. You hear a <whistles> and up in one of the windows you see a shadowy figure flashing a uh, a small hand mirror at you. Um, and you see this figure do it about three or four times. This immediately intrigues you again. <laughs> yes, uh, definitely. <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, kind of like medium whisper to the group, like, let's not be conspicuous. Perhaps maybe one or two of us investigate this. Perhaps a man with spider boots. You Diminutive, it, easily uh, missed. I feel like we're why, don't, why, why don't you sneak around? Um, try not to spook this character, just in case they're on our side. But just to reconnaissance, like you said. No, we're making a first impression, Phantom. Indeed. Uh, and I also have a... I also have a cantrip called Message. Okay. Uh, so I can point <laughs> at any creature within 120 feet uh, and whisper to them, and they can whisper back to me. Okay. How you? What you doing up there? Uh. So I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna give them the finger gun, and I'm gonna say, uh, uh, yes. What's How's it? How's it hanging? Okay, hold on. Give me just a second. A little, little up. It has to be twenty-five words, right? Um, let's see here. Actually, it doesn't specify. You point your finger toward a creature within range and whisper a message. The target, and only the target, hears the message and can reply in a whisper that only you can hear. You can cast the spell through solid objects if you're familiar with the target and know it is beyond the barrier. Magical silence, one foot of stone, one inch of common metal, a thin sheet of lead, or three feet of wood blocks the spell. The spell doesn't have to follow a straight line and can travel freely around corners or through openings. And that is all it says. Nothing about the length of the message. Okay. I think you're thinking of a sending stone, Donald. Yes, yeah, sending is also. Um, sending I was just looking at sending. Sending is 25. Okay, so um, I'm going to send you something here, Banta. Mm hmm. Oh, hey, by the way, outside of game chat, since everybody went quiet, uh, 
Cole, just some bad news for you. You uh, you want to know? You want to know something interesting? You said bad news for me? Yeah. No. Invincible season two, twenty twenty two. Why? Yeah. Okay, so uh, Bantam, you receive a message back, and the curtain closes, and the figure disappears. If you would like to read that out to the group, <laughs> that's up to you. Uh, and if you want to read that out, uh, that will be where we end tonight as well, because it's already 9 o'clock. Oh, damn. Oh. <laughs> I was kind of hoping we'd do it old school and stay up for another 10 hours. No, thank you. <laughs> I mean, whatever. I, I don't mind like hanging out a little while, but uh, yeah. Um, also, yeah, if you got stuff going on, I'll also totally fine. But uh, I will I will reveal what she said. Um, the figure that beckoned to us, her name is Esmeralda, and she says, she's alluding to the abbot drawing Strahd here, and I think she means to kill the abbot now. That's too hard. We should, we should go with, go find her. Dibs on the Yeah, go cool. back in there. We should have asked for a tour. Esmeralda is the weapon that that Madame Eva and the Mystic told us about. Uh, yeah. I think so. Alright. I'm not gonna like it. Also, she used the word we, as in there were other aberrations that might assist her and us. I'm in. Bitch. <laughs> Let's do it. I don't want to end. Okay. But yeah, let's do it. Okay. We'll have to wait till next time. How uh, uh, everybody else is pretty much I just assumed it was getting late. But I guess I'm it's okay Friday. It's, later. it's only been 3 hours. If everybody else would like to continue, we can. No problem. I think I'm the only one that doesn't want to, so let's just keep going. I mean, do you have work tomorrow or something? No, no it's a video game. It's just a it's video game and also I had a, a, a pretty long day at work. Today was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. mm. You can tap out for like for game reasons, you know. We need him in the yeah, fight. Yeah, I mean, you're not a captive audience if, here. If a if a fight goes on though, like you'll you'll need it. You'll need to take it. <laughs> this, this would have been this would have been great if Al could join us for one. Uh, so he could sneak in there, escort them out, and uh, heal all who needs to be healed, and they're perfect, ready for a fight. Could we pretend he's here? He's probably already looking for her. He's never joined us. <laughs> no. <laughs> you thought about it. <laughs> so, okay, so... Um, what would you guys like to do? Dustin, you're, you absolutely do not have to stay if you don't want to. No, I'm good. I can keep going. I'll, I'll stay. Yeah, treat that power and you're gonna need it. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess if we're staying, I was thinking, you know, going around uh, the the north, or no, that would be the east, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, and uh, checking out that side of the building, I guess. Seeing okay. Seeing if we can find a way up. All right. So you guys want to explore the other side there? No problem. Does that sound good to everyone else? Sure. I, I, I'd like to make a pit stop and see if I can uh, climb up to that window and speak with Esmeralda one on one. Um, yeah. So it's you. You can see which window it is, um, and you can make your way up to it. Um, no problem. Um, make a perception check. So you're able to get up to it just fine. Eighteen. Okay. 
Um, so the uh, window that you find um, is for the uh, barracks. When you look inside, there are bunk beds that have been disintegrated with age, lie in heaps along the walls of this moldy 30-foot square room. Um, you do not see anything else in the room. Um, is there a door that's open? Um, you can see that there is a way to get inside that room rather easily, um, but uh, it is on the second floor of the building that you're at right now. Um, gotcha. And this is the first floor that we got the uh, the twinkle in from? The, yeah, from the second story. So you're able to... If okay, you you're saying that I could get in there myself, but, like, nobody else could? The Well, no. The, the You're looking in through the window. Yeah. So you can see inside the window that this is the barracks, and you can see that there are doors leading into that room, but um, the windows are all locked. Okay. Gotcha. Okay, and then she's, she's not in that room. Okay. Right, you're looking in there. She is not in there. Okay, then yeah, I'll I'll get back down. Uh, you can always look in the other windows also. Um, as you guys are just kind of making your way. I know that's not actually north, but up towards this way here. Yeah, I would like to look in the other windows. Okay, which one are you looking in? Uh, so was I looking in the first one? Was Esmeralda in this one? Or can you see my selections? No. Dang. Go to the token, or the objects and tokens, I think. So, you saw it here. I'm going to uh, do this real quick. Oh, God. I hate the way they oriented this map. Because then they didn't do it with the other one. So, there is a top floor. I'm just making sure I can show you. Okay. So, how do I drag Cole? I just drag him onto it? All right. Yeah. Cole, I'm showing you a new map. Are you on it? Uh, no. What the fuck? Why isn't it doing it? There we oh, go. Lovely. Cool. Okay, so you saw her in this window here. Okay. Huh. Is that the back side? Yeah. So this is how it normally is supposed to be. Uh -huh. Um. But on the other map, it's flipped counterclockwise. Mm. So, or, um, so is it Damn, and I... You can't see the selections that I'm making? Are you pressing and holding? Oh, okay. That's there how you, you do go. it. That you were just... Okay. Uh, so, this side or no. this side? This one right here. Gotcha. That's where she was. Yeah. Okay. Because, honestly, I thought we were on the other... I thought we were on this side. I'm of the trying building. to figure this out. This fucking map orientation is so retarded. Mm -hmm. So you got this small edge. This is the north entrance. So this is the north entrance right here. Gotcha. Okay. So you did see it in this room here. I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Uh, okay, that makes sense. So then, um, from here, I would want to peek in th this window. Okay, give me just a second. So we're just seeing Bantam walk on the walls, peering in windows? Yeah. <laughs> um... A wooden counter shaped like an L stands at the front of the spacious office. All the other furniture has rotted away, leaving heaps of moldy wood and faded cloth. 
Uh, there's nothing in that room. Um, how's the window? Is it rickety? Is it loose? Uh, it's pretty sturdy and it's locked. Frick. Okay. Then I'd like to kind of go along one by one to these windows on the second floor and see if they're all locked. Okay, make an investigation check. I'm good at that. Not that good. Twelve. Yeah, so unfortunately none of these windows are budging. Um, you could always try breaking one. Um, but it's not very stealth of you. Is everybody still screaming? Um, there, you can still hear noises coming from inside. Sure. Um, but they're mostly coming from the first floor, like the ground floor. I'm gonna. Um, I'm gonna whisper something. Can if I whisper something, can you see it, Donald? To any other player? Yes, I can see everything. Okay. <laughs> I didn't realize that the DM could see other whispers. That's cool. That's good to know. <laughs> So I'm, I'm gonna point the finger gun at Talison. I was just going to say, as we were walking up this way, I would um, turn back to Ismark and Irina and be like, we found her, Esmeralda. Uh, Irina looks at you uh, very inquisitively, uh, and she says, excuse me? Did you hear what Bantam said? Did I hear what Bantam said? Uh, are you guys talking Esmeralda? No. Are you guys talking about the Esmeralda? <clears throat> we were told by the mystic that she was here, and now Bantam has uh, spoken to her. But I haven't received a message yet, Cole. I don't know if you're sending one or not. Yeah, I'm just... Irina kind of looks at you and uh, chuckles like, <laughs> yeah, okay. All this time, the legendary vampire hunter is just hanging out in the abbey. By the way, this abbey sucks. She's probably <laughs> held prisoner. I agree. <clears throat> but, um... I also agree, this abbey sucks. Uh, Bantam would like to make a loud noise, um, and so we should go find the... Oh, we should go back to the front door of the abbey and knock, uh, I suppose, to pretend that it was us making the sound. Oh, okay. uh, so, I <clears throat> so, Cole, just to... Oh, wait, no, you're not on our map, are you? Well, what is our no. alibi? Yeah, um, I'm going to respond back to, to Bantam. What should we tell the abbot if he answers us? Uh, I was hoping you'd come up with that bit. <laughs> I've only got this far. Did anyone, did anyone leave anything behind in the, the dining room? Ask, ask how long... Um, how long we have to make the wedding dress? I think that's a good uh, excuse. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> we're ready then. <clears throat> okay, so you guys are going to try to knock on the door to distract from the noise Bantam is about to make. 
Yes. And Phantom, where are you on this map? I am here. I'd like to be at the barracks window. Okay. So, let me... Uh... Okay, no problem. Okay, so yeah, that would be this one here. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to count off... Um like in a three, two, one kind of way with, uh, with Talison to, to time the knock. Okay. Coordinate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And so I'm, I'm just going up and I'm about to, I'm ready to pound on this front door. All right. Are you guys? I'll be right next to him. Okay. I need Phantom and Talison to roll <laughs> sleight of hand for me. Oh dear. Okay, and Bantam, you were trying to bust open the window? No, I'm casting knock. To unlock it? Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay, so um, it definitely didn't quite line up, but um, you guys managed to get the window unlocked for you, Cole. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, down here, sorry, I'm switching over my maps. Um, down here for Talison. Uh, let me uh, get some things going here. Um, <coughs> Otto and Siegfried are the ones to open up the door uh, and greet you once again. Forgive us, Otto, Zygfred. Um We just wanted to ask, we, we remembered, we forgot to ask, um, how long do we have uh, to bring the, the dress back? Do you happen to know? Otto uh, starts to just kind of start smelling at you, uh, and Zygfrek says, Well, uh, I guess we could go ask him. Um... Oh, you, you, uh, you don't have to bother yourself. I, I, you know, we'll, we'll figure it out. I would just expect to do it as soon as possible. Um, I, I do reckon that he means to pay you and the Burgomaster back something handsomely. Oh, money is no option or no um, issue at all. Oh, we'll, we'll take over the fee the oh, up front. Dear Tiefling, this is no monetary value. I, I do believe that the abbot plans to bring their son back to life. Yes, and I think that they were were wanting that as well. To be to be truly honest with you. So we shall go spread the good news. Please. It would be nice to see something nice happen around here. Zygfrek, uh kind of puts her cloak back over her head and uh, you see her kind of grab uh, Otto by the, uh, s the scruff of his shirt and kind of pull him away. Um, and they close the door behind them. Bantam, you did manage to get inside of that room. Um... So you are in here. Where are where's your character? Uh, let's see. Uh, I'm working on it. Okay, there you go. Okay, so um, when you get into this room um, and you step down you get the feeling like something is watching you. Uh, mm. And that kind of makes the hair stand on end. Uh, roll a uh, perception check for me. Love that. Hmm. 
21. Okay. So when you um, enter into this room, you distinctly see three shadows standing in the corner of the room. They're facing away from you, and they seem to look like nurses dressed in all white. Mm. They're mm-hmm. facing the corners of the room, facing away from you. Talking about Resident Evil. You need to get the fuck out Silent of here. Hill, more life. But yeah, oh, Silent Hill, Hill, yeah. Phantom's dead. Two more so. appear in the corner. Oh. Phantom, you stunned the wave. Uh, they just, they face the opposite way from you. Snake? Um, how, can I get a feel for how big they are as I slowly back out the window? Slowly? Um, yeah, as you start to, uh, back out through the window, uh, they're just normal humanoid. Uh, they look feminine in their shape. Um, and as you kind of get your body to the window, uh, you see one of the shadows, uh, that is sitting in the bed just next to you, um, turn towards you. Um, and, uh, you see their face for, uh, for just a moment and it's this sunken out hollowed uh dead version of yourself uh and as it makes eye contact with you uh it fades away like it disappears like into a puff of smoke the one it, the one next to you disappears almost as if it wasn't there at all um, and the nurses um, continue to just kind of stand in the corners of the room. You hear uh, across the room a noise come from this door right here. Okay. Mm-hmm. This, I guess I should just put everybody up here so they can see what's going on. huh? Do you guys want to see what's going on or you want to keep it a secret? Keep it a secret. We're not there. Yeah, I think... Keep it a secret, it's fine. Okay. Um, you see this nurse here walk into this door. Uh, and the door closes behind you. Uh, you swear you saw somebody else standing in that room when she walked in. Gosh. Hmm. Did, hmm. Did she see me? Did I see her see me? That nurse? You, you have no idea. Dang it. Okay. Um, hmm. Yeah, I'm going to continue backing out of here. Okay, so you're going to leave? Yeah. Okay. Do I have any knowledge of what any of that shit was? No. <laughs> okay. Visions of the past, perhaps. Okay, back down here on the ground floor. Where are you guys heading? Uh, east. Um, towards the end of the eastern wing. So up here so, towards this way? Yeah. Okay, so back down here on the uh, ground floor. We get to uh, that there. I'm not sure what that is. Um, that little, uh, building that you guys are passing there is a gatehouse stands at the entrance to the Abbey Gardens. Um, so it's just a little garden gatehouse, uh, like a little shed. Up here, uh, the gardens, uh, nestled between rising and plunging cliffs of four rectangular garden plots enclosed by a five foot high wall of mortared stones. White rabbits nibble on turnips uprooted by the cold. Two lifeless scarecrows with stuffed gullets and sackcloth heads hang from wooden crosses pounded into the cold, hard earth. (coughs) 
Um, do we check out this door over here? Yeah, I, we're looking for a way to meet Phantom inside. Did he just leave, him. though? One more thing, also. Um, as you guys... Uh, the Abbey's east wing looms over the garden. Its shattered windows dark and disturbing. A dark a door leads into this forlorn edifice, which apparently isn't as abandoned as one might have hoped. From within comes the laughter and the wailing of things that should not be. So that's oh. what you hear coming from the building that Phantom just went inside. Alone. Uh. Well, <clears throat> about. I, I wish, Phantom, you don't have sleep, do you? You don't have that spell? I do have sleep. What if you come down to us and you put some of these people to sleep? So, <laughs> uh, sleep, depending on the level I cast it at, um, it does 5d8 worth of hit points for sleep. So, if these things have a decent amount of hit points, uh, I might be able to put one of them to sleep. Maybe. So it's mm. 5d8 plus um, 2d8 for each level above first. So if I cast it at third level, it would be 9d8 um, of Mm. That's like one of us. Yeah. Okay. I have a decent amount of hit. Like, let me. I give, um, in the meantime, I give everybody else a piece of pie. I bought four pies. <laughs> See, if, if I was to roll. That roll. This, like 25. This might not have been put one of them to sleep. Yeah. Okay. One of them gets real drowsy. Mm. I feel like sleep is good for like one creature to guarantee, or like a bunch of tiny creatures. Like, mm. I could sleep like twig lights. Like a bunch of them at once. Um, needle bites. We could do. I think like goblins. Um, but yeah, like humanoid creatures that would like put up a fight is like one at a time, if that. Okay. I was thinking about it with these nurse things, but I have no idea how strong they are. Or if they could maybe put to sleep. Yeah. They, they sound like ghosts. Or spectral entities. Mm -hmm. Well, we might as well invite ourselves. Yep. Well, I'm gonna, yeah, I'd like to climb down and kind of explain what I saw in there. I gave you a piece of pie. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's all my pies. Everybody eat the pie. What all, what all pies did y'all eat? Um, I'm in my inventory. I'll just go ahead and eat mine to the home hearth pie. I had a drowned pack pie, I had two of those. A home hearth pie, lover's dance pie. That's it. I... Okay. So what did you give to who? So I, we split the pies. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so, uh, yeah, while you guys are out here in the garden... What would you like so, to do? So I climb down and I, I... If anyone's near my window, I tell them what I saw up there. Okay. Um, where? So you've come out on this side here, right? Mm-hmm. Um, come down. Uh, it, you would be able to um, meet up with them, no problem, on this side. Let me switch it back over. So I imagine you would have 
seen us, you know, walking in that direction as you were coming out. Yeah, so you would be able to meet up with them again right down here. <laughs> Bantam, what did you see? I'm not entirely sure. Just like everything else I've seen in this goddamn abbey. Um, <laughs> nurses? A figure that looked exactly like me, but without a face? Um, perhaps a ghost in another room? Uh, it all eludes and fascinates me so much. I am at once terrified and so excited to go back inside this place. <clears throat> Talison kind of puts his hand down on Bantam. Don't be terrified. I don't think we have anything to fear, you know, other than maybe a little bit of injury, perhaps, but you shouldn't be afraid of the ghosts themselves. Fear itself. And the nurses. That's all. <laughs> Should we jiggle the, key, the, the lock? Um, so, is, is there a lock? By the door. <laughs> that door there that Bantam is at. Um, let me get to I say we run for it. Go up the stairs. At that point, we might as well just kick this thing in. Does okay. anybody have a lock pickers set? Not. Nobody has that. That was Alex. Alex. <laughs> Coming into this uh, entrance here. Okay. Uh, what all is your uh, marching order? I'll go in first. I guess I'll take up the rear then, if, if Persephone's going first. I'll go second. Magic so, in the middle. Anything Where do you want to be, Yugen? Um, I kind of want to be at the back as well. Is is Mark and Arena coming? Uh, yes. Where are they? Okay. Just put them um, over here. Oh, they're we'll they're outside the in the garden. They're out uh, in this garden area here. That's where they're gonna stay. Yeah, they'll stay there. Keep watch. Okay. All right. Damn it, Alex. <laughs> um, as you enter that room, Janelle. Um, oh, the door opens. Uh huh. Okay. The lightless corridor has multiple doors behind which lie creatures that shatter the quiet with their mad cackles and whispered curses. The stench is overpowering. Okay. We walk forward. Can everybody see? That's the question. It is pitch see. black in here. There is no uh, window. I can cast light. So are they are these walls and doors and stuff like that? Um uh, so these they're uh you can look through let me see here. Um so yeah, these yeah. are like uh, uh, mad cells. So they're cells. Yeah, so these are like kind of like prison cells or like a um, uh, sanitarium. So uh, the doors so, have like a little gate on them that you can see through, that you can see into. Um, but other than that, all the walls and doors are solid. Oh. But it is loud in here. Okay. Um, I um, I motion behind me because I'm sure the door is still open a little bit. And I just tell people to like hold on shoulders, like hands on each shoulder to make okay. a conga line. So that way I can see moving forward. I can see in the dark. I have dark vision. Does that count? Uh huh. So I'll lead the way. Okay. Um, yeah. How far are you going in to the building? Um, until something stops me. <laughs> I think, um, uh, like, we would just be walking down the hall, um, trying yeah, to get upstairs. Trying to get to the stairs. Okay. okay. So as you enter into this room here, uh, you are making your way uh, down the hall. And about halfway th down the hall, uh, in each one of these uh, doors, by the way, um, there is something in each one. So this, starting with this one here. Um, I think you're I, on the wrong level. No. Oh, you didn't do the, there, this thing? Right here? Okay. Okay, so this one right here, as you pass through that one, or next to that one, um, inside there are seven mongrel folk. They're 
uh, seated in the middle of this room forming a ring. They appear to be chanting a spell. Is this the dogs playing poker? Mm. I hope not. Okay. I mean, I, I wish it was. That's funnier. And this one over here, um, that one is... Uh, this room contains a fort made out of piled bits of shattered furniture and torn drapery. From within the fort, you hear a mischievous cackle. Mm. There are two mongrel folk uh, hiding in this room. You make it down to these two here. There's an insane amount of detail in this fucking thing. S15C. Um, seven mongrel folk are... Oh, uh... Uh, quarreling mongrel folk. Uh, four mongrel folk creatures brawl amid the wreckage of this bedchamber while a fifth watches and cackles behind a life-size painted wooden statue of a saintly woman in robes. It's, uh, it's all fucked up, though. Okay. On the other side here. Uh... Filthy mongrels cradle screaming young in the debris-strewn corners of this room, while several more hoot, holler, roll on the floor, and whack each other with sticks. That's in this room here. How big are these mongrel folks? Do we know? They're, they range. So some of them, uh, it all depends on kind of what um, animal they kind of uh, fused with or whatever happened with their genes. Uh, so... Um, some of them have the body of a monkey, but the arms of a human. Um, just imagine these awful, uh, no two are alike. Um, half, uh, canine features, um, features of lion and, uh, exotic creatures, birds, uh, spiders, insects, uh, humans. Uh, you see babies, uh, and they have half of the face uh, of uh, scales and the uh, both of their legs are from two separate animals. Uh, they're, every single one of them uh, is different uh, and every single one of them seems to uh, kind of be in some kind of anguish. Mental anguish. Okay. Okay. <laughs> We slowly make our way forward. As you get to this point here? All right. I mean, is everybody okay with that? Yep. I mean, that they could time. unlock all the doors and then, like, all of them descend upon us, you know? Don't go post out. If he dies, he dies. Yep. Balls okay. to the wall. Okay. I mean, I would have the tools to deal with that if even they all came out all at once. I think that would probably be... Really cool. Really cool. They're <laughs> more Some of them are babies. You use up all okay. your spells. I Even can use one spell and hit like 20 of them. Just open up a portal of tentacles in the middle and watch. There we go. I mean, this is advantageous. If we do get to like here and they all start pouring out, we're, we're bottlenecked. You know what I mean? We could focus in on these things. Point. So I got it. <laughs> Even in the gloom, you can make out a monstrous shape lumbering down the hall. When the darkness can no longer hide its true nature, your eyes are treated to a terrifying seven-foot-tall assemblage of human parts. Uh, flesh golem. Hi. Seems Paul or something. Sleep them. Sleep them. Perfect. <laughs> Try to put. Oh, there we go. Sleep works best when the creature is weakened. Maybe I could cast dark. Oh, it's already dark. Um. <laughs> Gut punch him. That'll weaken him. How do we get out of this? Let me see everybody, here. use your escapes all at once. If everybody hits it at once, you I You all might need to roll initiative. Damn it. Oh, okay. <laughs> all right. Nice. Bye. Hit it. Hit it now. <laughs> As you sit there and chat this thing. Oh, I thought we were chatting to... outside. We were we were well, outside. As you guys, as you start to 
wander down the hall, it's going to notice you before it, you notice it. I think we rush it and push it over here. I'm going to cast, um, I'm going to do Ring of the Ram. And I'm going to try to push it against this wall. And I think that we need to draw ourselves away okay. from ourselves. You guys need to roll initiative first. And oh, okay. He has, okay. he has <laughs> the jump on you. Okay. Stephanie's like, I'm going to kill it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter what the shit it is. I'm just going to whoop its ass. Okay, we'll see. <laughs> Damn, Persephone. <laughs> oh, wait, I have, an, I have inspiration. Do you want to use it for initiative here, or do you want to wait? Yeah, I would wait if I wait. was you. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm still assuming... on the front. I'm assuming the only fight isn't it isn't gonna be the only one fight against the flesh golem. Sorry guys. It's gonna be Yugen versus a hundred of mongoloids. I'm hoping. I'm hoping that's what you They can have the flesh golem. My time to shine, you know? All my AoEs. Right? <laughs> right. <laughs> uh twenty to twenty-five. No. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Uh, Yugen, Bantam. Finally legal. Yugen, Bantam. Hexamar. Uh, Hexipoo. That's Hexamar. what they call. <laughs> Talisman for stuff. Okay. So I'm gonna so, change the music up a little bit here. Would we have no, would we have been hit with alarm or? or... Uh, oh. not with Talison being in the back. No, oh, well. Talison always at the back. He needs to be in the middle. Oh, Persephone, Persephone took up the front. So <laughs> what's he doing there? Not much. I'm gonna go with some water real quick. Okay. He's got a huge blast. <laughs> yeah, Eldritch Blast has an insane reach. I sure hope so. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. He's over here rolling initiative for 27 months. <laughs> <laughs> it's taking so long. Computers like start to stutter. <laughs> oh my god. Okay. If all those fails, we are still on only on the second story, so you can just bust into one of these offshoot rooms. Sure. Jump through a window. We're only on the first. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you guys are on the ground floor. Even easy. Uh, here, while we wait for Janelle, I'll explain these uh, two side rooms here. Um... so many fucking notes in this goddamn game okay uh just so you guys know on the side here is where is she uh eight wrong girl Eight mongrels caper about in the wreckage of this bedchamber while singing a rhyme one of them holds up a glittering gold statuette and it leads the mad parade. The mongrel folk sing the following rhyme. The devil dwells in his dark house upon the misty pillar. First he'll taste her sweet, sweet blood, and then he'll have to kill her. They're chanting that in this room. Um, That's a pretty good one. Yeah, it's pretty good, especially uh, with the fucking flesh golem just bounding down the hallway at you guys. It's pretty intimidating. 
Um, fucking spooks. And then on this side here, uh, you have four mongrel folk creatures brawl amid the wreckage of this bedchamber uh, while the fifth one watches. So, more fighting. Uh, okay. Here we go. God, this music I chose is really terrifying. Okay. The first... The flesh golem rushes forward and makes two attacks. One slam attack against Persephone. Ooh, all right, y'all. Here we go. Seven. You were muted. I was just sassing. Saying that he's gonna get a twenty. No. Just stance him. Uh, the first attack towards you does miss. The second one does hit. Uh, the first one hits the wall behind you. Okay. Uh, and the wall behind you just so happens to be the door to this chamber here. Oh. Um, so he misses you. Hits the chamber door behind you. Um, and the eight mongrel folk that are in there stop chanting and start to go wild and start to tear at the door. Um, the other slam fist comes down, uh, catching you for nine bludgeoning damage. Thank God for pies. Thanks, Grandma. Granny. You guys are welcome. Okay. Uh, the turn goes to Yugen. What's up, what's up, what's up? It's Yugen. Um, I'm assuming it's still really dark. I can cast light. Um, yeah, it's pitch eventually. black. But I think that would make them all go breezier. Well, I'm used to I'm used to mining in caves, so it's, it's fine. Or in caverns, they might hate light. light. We don't know. I know. That's why I don't want to cast it. But has, Well, I'm actually about to cast it, no, so... Gonna cast what? I'm gonna cast a spell. I didn't think you had spells. Oh, I have a ton, actually. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, okay, go ahead. Okay, uh, for my first action, I'm gonna cast Fairy Fire at it. Um, so each object in a 20 foot cube range is outlined in blue, green, and violet light. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and outline it in green. Uh, okay. Any creature in the area when the spell is cast is outlined in light if it fails a dexterity saving throw. So What's the dex save? Uh, 12. I'm sorry, I cocked it. <laughs> cocked it. Cocked it. Saved. He saved? Yes. Woof. Of course he did. Um, cast it okay, again. I'm gonna cast it again. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Okay. I'm just gonna cast. I don't get to use spells. No, I'm actually just gonna for uh, since I already wasted one of my actions, I'm just gonna. Oh, hunter's mark isn't hunter's mark like a bonus action? I think so. I think so. I guess I'll put hunter's mark on it and then attack it. <laughs> okay. Sorry. Maybe, maybe put some of your light bugs on it. Um, if I hit it, you got it. <laughs> okay, so mother trucking. Trying to figure out what I want to use here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just fire an arrow at it because at this point, I I don't know what else to do. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead and roll your attack at it. Seventeen. Okay, seventeen does hit. Roll your damage. Sweet. Nice. Sorry, I every week. Alright, five damage total for an arrow. That's terrible. Okay. Um, so I fire an arrow into it, and then I'm also going to um kind of scatter bugs around it so instead of like attacking it directly i'm just going to scatter lightning bugs around it 
so that way it doesn't take damage from that. But because of my hunter's mark, he does take more damage. How much um, total damage? It's like okay, 1d8. Sorry. It's 1d6 of additional. So 4, so 9 damage total. Okay. Uh, I'm, I used my bugs, but instead of hurting it, I just made light bugs around it. Okay. So in the uh, brief <laughs> moment where the arrow hits him and these light bugs pop out, you see the arrow hits um, and uh, it cuts through the skin. Uh, the arrow uh, kind of, it doesn't sink in. Uh, it, it makes its cut, hits the wall to the side, uh, and the flesh golem continues its rampage. Oh, sorry, gonna do more damage, and uh, sorry it saved on its fucking dexterity throw. Yeah. You think it wouldn't because it's so big. Yeah. Okay, their uh, turn goes to Bantam. You're on mute. I'm going to. Is it? Am I within its range? Like, if I were to back away now, would I? Would it get an opportunity attack? Yes. Okay. Uh huh. So what I'm going to do is. I'm going to. Shit. I'm going to cast a second level catapult at it with my silver coin. Uh, okay. So that will be... Uh, there's a 15 dexterity save. Failed. Two. How much... Uh, go ahead and roll the damage. Thirteen. Is that thirteen damage? Okay. Yeah. Two All ones. right. Yep. The coin flies out of your hand, disappears into the golem's flesh, and rips back out in a different spot, back to your hand, dealing the full thirteen. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's it for me. Okay. Good turn. The turn goes to Hexamer. I'm going to cast uh, second level chromatic orb. Okay. What does that do again? Make a spell attack, choose the... Uh, four inch diameter sphere of energy, and I choose what type of damage. Okay. Is that it? 13 hits, yes. Cool. I'm going to do fire damage. Okay. Yeah, Frankenstein's hate fire, so. <laughs> Frankenstein's hate fire. Uh, okay, so yeah, the, uh, the fire explodes in the golem's face, and he starts to uh, let out this ungodly scream. Uh, and starts to flail around uh, violently uh, attacking everything around it. That's all I got. Sweet. Talison. Alright. It's uh, quite tight quarters in here. Um, so I'm going to cast Blink. Um, to try to get on the other side of this thing, but it really won't take effect until next turn, so, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, I cast Blink, um, and then I'm gonna, well, I can't really do that, because uh, Blink is an action. Yeah, so that, that's really all I can do. And I'm not gonna step in uh, Yugen's way so that he has a clear line of sight to the the enemy. So, at the end of my turn, I'm going to roll for Blink. Um, if I get uh, 11 or higher, I fade into the ethereal realm until the start of my next turn. 
Okay. And then I can move. I can then I can move up to ten feet, um, anywhere. Yeah. So I I am in now the ethereal realm. Okay. And that's my turn. All right, Persephone. Okay, I'm gonna cast a spell first. Okay. I'm gonna cast Bless on myself, Phantom, and Hexamer. So now on attack rolls or saving throws for the next minute, they get added D4. Nice. Okay. On both or either or? On both. Cool. I think I think that's how it is, Dom. Mm-hmm. Okay. okay. All right. And then I'm gonna attack him. Okay, roll, roll your attack. Okay. Twenty-two. Twenty-two hits. Okay. damage. Okay. And you're attacking him with your sword? Yeah. Okay. All right. So yeah, you uh, lunge out with your sword uh, and you uh, you see the tip of the blade make contact, but it tch, slips to the side, slips open a, a cut across the stomach um, and the flesh golem raises his arms once again um, to come down to attack you um he is still uh enraged from getting hit in the face with that uh fireball wall um but he makes his first attack against persephone um and it does miss second attack um also misses um so he uh essentially goes into this uh, flying rage and uh, goes to slam at Persephone. Um, you are able to step out of the way. Uh, unfortunately, the door behind you is smashed to bits um, and the uh, mongrel folk inside. Um, two of them are right at the door uh, and you see Four of them crawl up onto the walls, up onto the ceiling, and you see all four of them. Two of them scatter down this way, and two of them scatter down this way. Was that the room where they had the little gold idol? Um, this was the chanting room, yes. Which one has the item? Uh, you don't see it in any of their hands. But uh, the, these two here are... Uh, and these two here, they're just booking it across the ceiling. Okay, uh, I'm going to roll initiative for those guys real quick. Um, and the turn for the... The turn goes to Yugen. Thank God. Oh, uh, not not great. Not a great situation we find ourselves in here, folks. Um, so the mongrel that's 
basically to my back. Are they on the ceiling or are they on the ground? They're on the ceiling, booking it. Oh, they're leaving. They're yeah. They, they it, you did not see them even take two looks at you. They are just running away. Okay, cool. Then I'm I'm not going to engage the one behind me. Uh, I'm gonna fire an arrow at this boy right here. Okay. Nat 20. Nat okay. 20. Roll your damage. Alrighty. Alrighty. Alright. So. Don't forget about Hunter's Mark, too. Oh, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna roll everything here. <laughs> One D8. Let's see. D6. That's d a damn. <laughs> damn. Okay, so um, I'm gonna try and do math here real quick. Okay, everybody. Um, <clears throat> six plus six is is twelve. Okay, and then and then nine plus uh, nine plus twelve is um. Uh, 21. Uh, cool, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, man. Okay. Uh, so, 21 damage, and some that 20. Yep, so, yeah, your critical hit hits, and it, uh, sticks into the side of the flesh golem. Uh, you can see he reaches down and kind of breaks the, uh, arrow. Uh, it didn't lunge itself very far into the skin, but enough for he had to break it off. Um, and uh, he lets out this blood curdling uh, scream and kind of holds himself up against the door uh, to the chamber behind him. Um, and you hear the door kind of creaking under its weight as it looks at you all uh, with uh, exhaustion and hatred. All right, I'm going to shoot it again. Go for it. Ugh. 13. 13 hits. Oh, 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 all right. It's okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, all right, there we go. Because it's still got Hunter's Mark on him. So, uh, yeah, you managed to hit him again, this time kind of in the side of the leg that's supporting him, and uh, he kind of stumbles uh, and he breaks the door behind him here. Um, these four stop fighting and they run into the corner. Um, the flesh golem uh, is still standing and still ready to fight. Jeez. Okay. Yeah. That's Bantam. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna hook a firebolt at him. Okay. So rolling now. Twenty-three to hit. That hits. Oh wait, no, I might have rolled that wrong. Twenty to. Hit. Or wait, no, hit slash DC is that for like the initial hit to see if I hit the creature? Yes. Okay, so yeah, then, then that is accurate. And then... Ta-da! And then... 12. Damage okay. For Firebolt. Uh, so yeah, you fire the Firebolt at the... Uh flesh golem and uh, you see his uh, skin uh, and the uh, kind of connective tissue uh, kind of start to uh, spark up um, and the flames seem to really really piss him off um, and that makes uh, two of these uh, mongrel folk uh, you see them skitter across the ceiling again and um, 
and these two are kind of trying to fight their way out, but the flesh golem is kind of holding up against the door. Uh, it's just chaos in that little area. Um, the mongrel folk um, attack. These two here, two Persephone. That's a D12. That's not even a D20. Okay. The first one misses. Second one hits. The second one that's coming at you um, has the uh, face of uh, like a manged bear um, and a, a fat kind of humanoid body. And uh, switching through the doorway, uh, you catch uh, the tip of what looks to be a scorpion's tail. Uh, you take 12 poison damage. Um, on the uh, roof here, these two hop down, as do these two hop down uh, the two up here will make their attack against Yugen because Talison is not in this realm what is your AC? 16 alright same one hits one uh, misses the no. yeah the one that hits you is just it's a uh, it looks mostly feline as it runs across the uh, uh, roof or the uh, ceiling mm -hmm. of this corridor um, and you look up just in time to see the end of the tail uh, whip out and uh, bite you in the face my face? <laughs> yes the tail whips out <laughs> bites you in the face takes a good 10 piercing damage okay the other one misses Hexamer, it's your go. Uh, so if Talzin isn't in reality, that means I can shoot through him, right? Yeah, Talzin is behind you, yeah. Right, cool. So I'm going to target that uh, thing there. Okay. With... Firebolt. Okay, twenty one hits. Uh, sorry, hold on. Okay. Yeah, uh, uh, so you hit him, uh, you said with what spell were you using? Firebolt? Uh, firebolt. Okay, yeah, so you hit him uh, with the firebolt, and uh, he f uh, flips around uh, on the ceiling, its upper half turning fully towards you, but its legs um, like spiders stuck to the ceiling. Um, they're almost like grasshopper legs, um, and they st stick the his body to the... Uh, cavern. It turns around uh, and hisses at you with this gross, uh, like, bug-like face. Oh. That's the end of it. There's tons of chicken up there. Uh, Alright, Hexer, was that your turn? Yes. Okay. Talison. All right, at the beginning of my turn, um, I see, so from the ethereal plane, I can see everything in shades of gray happening in the material realm. Um, so I see those mongrel folk jump down from the ceiling and attack Yugen, and then I see Hexamer attack one of them. Um, I am going to, uh, thinking that Hexamer and Yugen have the two mongrel folk handled, I'm gonna appear next to the flesh golem okay. here. Uh, and then I'm going to just, uh, attack it with my pack weapon. Okay. All right, go ahead and make your attack roll. Um, 
That would be a 16. Okay, uh, that does hit. Go ahead and roll your damage. Eight damage. Okay. And then um, I can attack it again uh, with my packed weapon. Okay. Twenty-seven. Twenty-seven does hit. Uh, another eight damage. Okay. Wow. So, uh, you appear out of nowhere and start to attack um, this flesh golem. And as you do, you're, you're landing these hits on him, um, but your blade is not piercing his skin as, as you expect it to. Uh, it's piercing, it's doing damage to him, but he's, this, whatever he's made out of is just strong as all hell. Uh, but he does, you see him take the damage. Um, okay, and then at the end of my turn, I will uh, roll to blink again. I remain in this realm. <laughs> okay. Persephone. What's up, girl? <laughs> How long does it take to switch weapons? A whole turn? What weapon are you changing from to what? Slashing to bludgeoning. Um, I would say if you... I would say if you drop your weapon that you're holding right now, you can drop it and just pull out the other one uh, as a bonus action. Um, I'll do it. I'll drop my sword and bring out my, uh, my uh, whatever it is, war hammer. Okay. And I'm going to go ahead and attack the flesh golem. Okay. Three to hit. Okay, that does hit. damage okay so you hit him with your hammer and you feel like you just hit a brick wall uh, it takes you see it take that hit but you felt how strong this thing really is and uh, it it took the hit but it is still coming at you okay I'm gonna attack again well let me see here yeah, I guess, um, hold on. Oh. <laughs> My apologies to whoever messaged me that. Um. Okay. Well, I don't know what that's about. So. <laughs> a twenty-nine to hit. Good God. That does hit. You guys are rolling like the upper brackets. Yeah, but then when it comes to damage, we don't do anything. Eleven damage. Okay, so yeah, same thing. You go to attack him, and uh, you hit him, but man, if that... It's like... Like I said, it's like hitting a brick wall. Okay. The flesh golem uh, turns towards Talison, who has just appeared out of nowhere. Um... And turns towards you to make a two attacks, two slamming motions. Okay. Uh, 
Okay. Even with disadvantage uh, from the swinging around, uh, he did manage to hit you both times. The... The first attack comes down, smashes you for 11 bludgeoning damage. The second attack... Uh, he has to add it up. I know. I'm also bad at it's gonna wow. be 16 bludgeoning damage from the second attack. He got two eights? Yeah. Well, uh, well, there's pluses and things going on also. Oh, okay. One smash, two smash, and it just screams out at you. Uh, Yugen. Yeah. It's you again. <laughs> well, I can't attack the flesh golem now. <laughs> so... I guess I'll make myself useful and fight this thing. <laughs> okay, you can make an attack roll against it. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think what I want to do here, actually. I have a spear that gives me hit points, but I highly doubt I'm going to kill it in one hit. <laughs> um, so I'm going to use Summoner's Dance on it. I'm going to try and roll hit. So... Currently have a good arrow at it. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't want to. I don't want to abuse the system more than I already have. Okay, twenty six. Twenty six does hit. I okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. One D eight Ten damage for okay. that initial, and then um. Since I hit, I'm gonna go ahead and take the bug damage on it. I'm gonna uh, have the as I shoot the arrow, a centipede coils around it, and it's gonna bite him in the, the face too. Okay. <laughs> a bug face bite. Yeah, not not the arrow. Okay. All right. So uh, yeah, the it's enough to make him kind of fall off the uh, ceiling, uh, and once he hits the ground. All of his legs bend the wrong way and lift him back up to where he's standing and his head kind of like snaps back um, and it's making this kind of like awful spider crawling motion at you, uh, but it is still alive. Oh god, okay. Um, <laughs> pull out Summoner's Dance, so I'm gonna <laughs> try and shoot it again. Twenty-two. That hits. Can you do a bonus action and move your hunter's mark? No, I have. To, you have to kill the golem for me to be able to do that. Oh. And I can't hit the golem anymore without shooting Talison right in the face. Wow. Yeah, sorry, I can't roll blink consistently. <laughs> it's okay. Uh, six damage to it. Okay. I don't know where I hit it. You're gonna have to. Um. Uh, yeah. So you. Uh, hit it pretty bad um and it starts to kind of slink off um and uh with like two of its uh kind of spider legs kind of crawling it away um it's still alive but very injured okay uh it's crawling away or towards me because if it's trying to disengage i want it's to just it. it's just kind of flapping around on the ground it hasn't moved away from you okay um is there any way I can get Summoner's Dance out, or do I need to wait till next turn? Uh, what are you doing with it? I just want to get it out and get it ready to attack. I want to put my bow away. Uh, yeah, on your next turn, you'll be able to just put it away and uh, switch it for a bonus action, because you're finesse. Okay, cool. Oh, I did not. Yeah, I could have done that in the first place. All right, never mind. Okay. Um, the turn goes to Bantam. You guys really mucked it up in here, didn't you? Hey, hold on. 
I'm gonna do another fireball. Uh, uh. One. Oh God. Okay, is, so is yeah. It uh, you go to fire off your firebolt, uh, and you manage to uh, catch Persephone instead. Persephone, roll your uh, dexterity save. Uh, the fun of close quarters combat, my dude. <laughs> Should have. This is a thunder wave. No, because if I use thunder wave. It makes a very, very, very loud noise. It's three times as loud as knock. And this creature screaming doesn't make a loud noise? It's breaking lightning doors. striking inside, and also, yeah, <laughs> all these doors. It seems like it does a lot of screaming anyway. Yeah, it's screaming, it's broken down doors, there's multiple things screaming now. I've almost obliterated this poor, poor spider creature. Honestly, this guy's not a great abbot. Damn! Okay, so. Uh, so it's a Oh, sorry. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, you saved. So Bantam, roll your damage, and Persephone, you take half damage. But I'm resistant to it as well. So you take so a I quarter take of it. Okay. Nice. But <laughs> just be like max damage. Okay, good. Eleven. So half is six, and half of that is four? Three. Or three. You'll take three. Three, three fire damage. Okay. All right. Singed. Phantom, if you want to shoot anybody, go ahead and just hit me with a fireball. <laughs> the turn uh, goes over to the mongrel folk. Uh, these two here are still uh, trying to get out of the room, but the uh, golem is still in the way. Uh, these two right here are going to attack Persephone. She's uh, kind of whole. Persephone, you got the fire flesh golem on one side, and you got these two mongrel folk behind you. And people throwing fireballs at me left and right, or fireballs or whatever. Yeah. Persephone. Um, Okay, so uh, one of them manages to hit. Six piercing damage slashes you across the back. Um, the other one doesn't quite manage to get its arm out the window, or out the door. Um, these two here are going to attack you again. Um, the very, very injured one rolls a one. Um, oh! Oh, no. As it crawls towards you, you uh, are very easily able to just lift your leg and just stomp it out. Uh, the second one does hit for six piercing damage. The turn goes to Hexamer. Nice. Get him, Hex. Or not. Or don't get him. It's up to you. <laughs> Do, uh, <laughs> All right, I know I was on mute. Um, yeah, I'm gonna throw out a. I'm gonna go with the first level. Uh, actually, I'm just gonna go with Firebolt again. Nice, 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 nice. I'm gonna shoot that one remaining Mongwood. Which one? Oh, this one. Okay. Yeah, in front of you again. Uh, not, uh, the one in front of me or the one next to me? The one that you shot before? The one next to you. The one where me. This one. Oh, this one's dead? Yeah. You stopped it. Oh, God. Oh, damn it. I did not want to do that. <laughs> it rolled a one and it just kind of died. Killed itself. I know, but I, I wanted to kill it with my blood spear next round so bad. <laughs> That's fine. The Okay, yeah, Hexmer 19 hits. Nice! 
Jeez, damn. Okay. Yeah, so uh, this hit manages to knock it off the ceiling, and it is on the ground kind of writhing around. It is still alive. Is it prone? Uh, yeah, it's fallen prone off the ceiling. There you go, you go. Thanks. <laughs> All right, Hexer, is that your turn? Yep. Talison. All right, so after just being taking a wallop from the... the flesh golem. I'm going to um, look at him and my eyes are going to turn black and I'm going to point and uh, yes. cast Hexblade's Curse on him. Um, so I get a damage bonus and I, I roll a, or I get a crit on 19 or 20. Okay. Um, and I'm going to just attack him with my glaive again. Twice if I can. 24. 24 hits. Uh, so 12 damage on the first hit. Oh, plus three, so 15. Yep. Okay. And then I'll attack again. Make my second attack. Um, 19. 19 hits. And then so 18 damage. Uh, that includes the Hexblade's Curse. Okay. Yeah. Uh... Tell us and tell us what it looks like. You kill it. So, I look over at the the golem. And my eyes turn black, even darker than the darkness surrounding us. And I I point at him with my my glaive, and then I just impale him, and then like uppercut, and then do kind of like a swipe down again um, on its head. When the Flesh Golem dies, I regain 11 hit points because of my Hexblade's Curse. Mm -hmm. Damn! <laughs> and I reach out with my hand, and the frostbite on my hand fills up my entire arm and, and creates this, this dark, blackened like shoulder, the, the same thing that Persephone saw in our vision. <laughs> and I, I reach out to the, the Golem, and I say, Spirit, come to me. I will show you the way. And from the the court, the, the flesh golem, a specter emerges. Um, I don't know if you wanna um, create something for that, Donald, or I can just use the, the, the flesh golem. Yeah, that's fine. Um, and yeah, so now the I have a specter under my command. Can you keep making them? I can make one once per long rest. Oh, okay. At least it was a flesh golem one. It lasts once in, until the end of my long rest, unless it dies. So. Okay. Is it considered? Is it just a specter? So it just has its own set of stats now. Yeah. So I have the stats in my um, D and D Beyond. Um, it, it takes the specter stat block. It gets a few bonuses because of me. Um, because of my my feature that allows me to do this, but but yeah, so it, it uh, rolls its own initiative, um, it obeys my commands, and yeah. Cool. That was your gift. That was my gift, and I was keeping it a secret until now. <laughs> nice. Cool. All right. After the flesh golem falls, um, these four mongrel folk here they disappear they run up. the uh, these two here that were attacking you they come back into the corner here um, and all of the mongrel folk uh, grow quiet um, after the flesh golem falls Can I pick up my sword? Yes. I, I switch swords, I, weapons. I've been now carrying my sword. Sword. Okay. I would like to approach my new specter, um, and just look at it. I guess uh, to see um, if if it is just the specter of the flesh golem, or if it has a, a more like humanoid spirit to it. Um. Well, the, it's. 
I mean, well, you go ahead and explain. Uh, what what would you like it to appear as? Um, let me send you a message, Donald. <laughs> okay. In the meantime, can I heal myself? Uh, yeah, battle has uh, come to an end. Thanks to that pie, I survived. Um, uh, that? Needs healing because I use I I'm, I'm back to full health. I have ten extra healing without using any of my spells. I'm good. I was able to heal myself, so. Okay. Forty out of forty-six. Phantom Hexamer. I didn't get touched. Yeah, I'm still full health. Plus okay, seven. you get come here. How much do you need? Uh, six. Okay, six. So I have Thank four you. left. Thank you. Okay, um, okay, and then another thing here. So as the uh, everything kind of quiets down, um, this chamber here, um, you guys finally get a look in there. Um, and that one is this room once shared. This room was once a shared bed chamber, but its furnishings have been destroyed. Three shrieking mongrels cower in the shadowy northwest corner. One of them cradles something shiny. And then in this one over here, uh, you can expect to find this room is packed wall to wall with mongrels wallowing in their own filth. The floor is strewn with gnawed uh, bones. Well, I say, I say we hurry up and get upstairs. Let's like, let's get out of here. Oh, like the jinkies. Um, okay, let's go by by the way, my my spirit appears to be that of a Barovian woman. Oh, okay. Yes. I'm gonna go charge my phone real quick. One second. <laughs> Is there a quick and easy way to get the shiny thing? The idol? I mean, they said they were holding it. There's one of them, uh, one chamber, they were holding an idol, and the other one, they were, uh, someone is holding something shiny. Are you gonna walk in there? You gonna, you gonna try and approach one of them? Uh, actually, I would like to try and maybe talk to this one? Like, see if maybe there's some kind of communication, like, they're calm now. I think we need to get out of here because maybe that means uh, Abbott's coming. Okay, so one at a time. What is uh, so you try to talk to it? Uh, it is incohesive. It cannot. It doesn't understand you. Okay, so I try. But it's horribly injured and it's on the ground bleeding out. Uh, the um. Hexamer, you were uh, asking about. This room here, the one with the idol. Uh, is that the one where there's the four cowering against the wall right now? Yeah. Uh, I want it, but I think I'm. Uh, well, you can see that. You can see the uh, golden idol. It's on the ground. Uh, you can see the four of them huddled in the corner, uh, and they're kind of trying to get the courage up to run out and grab it but they're um, uh, clearly afraid of stepping out of line. Hexamo, would you like a little bit of a distraction to go pick can that I up? Use, I was about to say, can I use Mage Hand just to grab it? Yes. I cast Mage Hand to grab it. Like, yoink. Okay, yeah. The Spectral Hand uh, a, of a uh, bone skeletal hand reaches down and uh, picks up the uh, idol um, and 
It is a golden statue of Saint Markovia. Sick. Okay. Um, and it's it, you would figure it'd be worth about two hundred fifty gold. Um, and uh, it feels magical to some degree. Hmm. Cool. Okay. Um, what would you guys like to do? Book it downstairs. Yeah, down the hall. <laughs> Booking it downstairs? Okay. Where are you now, your man? Alright, so let me uh, switch over, switch my gears here. Uh, you definitely uh, make it. Okay, now remember that this map is all fucking janky. Uh, but you guys are in the southern part of this map here. Okay, so those stairs lead to here. Okay, let me go ahead and refresh you on there because you guys were downstairs. Um, upstairs office. The wooden counter shaped like an L stands at the front of the spacious office. All of the other furniture has rotted away, leaving heaps of moldy wood and faded cloth. You press through to the next room. Okay. Uh, yeah, as you guys pass through this room, you can hear the hoops, laughter, and screams of the mongrel folk begin again down below you. Uh, from where you just came. Okay, uh, and again, what's your marching order up here? Who's going in? I will, I will take the, the lead in this one. So I, I kind of like walk up to Persephone with the specter beside me. Um, uh, let, let me take the front this time okay where do you guys want me then in the back i'm gonna go ahead and stand behind so seems to be working out so far. <laughs> i'll be in the middle and then also can i like take a peek at the corpse of that uh that flesh golem to see if it had anything on it like a tumor uh, with like some teeth or <laughs> Yeah, so uh the the golem um uh, when you go to search it for anything, it is just heaps and heaps of sewn together flesh and Sweet. nothing else. Before we walk into the next room, um, like as I take the, the lead here, I'm going to cast uh, Armor of Agathis on myself, and this icy sheen of uh, like frost develops over me um, as, as a little bit of temporary HP. And if something hits me, they take a bunch of cold damage. <laughs> okay. All right, so... As you walk into this room here... <coughs> Actually, hold on, sorry. Before we do that, I want to cast a spell. Who has the lowest AC? I think... I have 16, so I think I'm tied with somebody for the lowest. I have 14. 14. Okay. What about you, Yugen? Are you here? I'm 16. 16. I thought it was you, I said. Phantom is 16, right? Yeah, I'm definitely higher than Talison. All right, so Talison, um, your mage armor or your armor of Agathis, what does that do? It gives me temporary hit points, and if something uh, attacks me, they take a bunch of cold damage. I'm going to cast um, Shield of Faith on you. Um, you get plus two to your AC for the duration. How long is Thank the duration? You. Ten minutes. Okay. Concentration. So I I, t I pull out a piece of parchment with some holy text written on it, and I just slam it to your chest. <laughs> and then it just evaporates in place. 
Cool, thank you. Okay. Yes. So. Then I, I will step through the door um, if it's unlocked with my spirit. Okay. Um, yeah, as you uh, walk into the uh, room there, uh, you immediately notice the um, shadows uh, standing about the room. Uh, you notice they are some kind of uh, nurse um, and they seem to just kind of stay where they are um, crying to themselves in the corners of the room. What do I notice, or do I notice anything with Eldritch Sight looking at them? Um, when you look around the room with your Eldritch Sight, um, you are completely overwhelmed as the uh, room erupts into these bodies crawling over each other. Uh, and you just, when you open your Eldritch Sight to this room, the bodies in the ground are covered in bodies and uh, many of them look towards you and start to crawl over them, uh, each other to get to you. Uh, roll a constitution uh, check for me. Um, I think you get plus four, Talison, for my, oh, actually, hold on. My... Just waiting. <laughs> oh, um, is this a saving throw? No, that's a check. It's, a, it's technically a saving throw, yes. Oh, okay, so you get plus four to it. Okay, thank you. I rolled a 17. Okay, so uh, you're able to shake it off, um, your Eldritch Sight, uh, and the room kind of goes back to normal. Um, the door to your right hand side the second you open your eyes everything goes back to normal the specters have gone of the nurses and you hear uh, this door click um i'm gonna send my specter into that room uh to to see what's up <laughs> Okay, so what does your specter do? Your specter. So they can. Yeah, sorry. Um, they have incorporeal movement, so they can move through other creatures and objects as if they were difficult terrain. Um, and they have a 50 flying feet of a well hover, a speed, and they cannot talk, um, but they understand all languages they knew in life. Okay. Uh, yeah, you send your specter in there. Um, nothing seems to happen. Um, Is the door open? The door's closed. And then I will go and cautiously open the door. Okay. So... When you open up this door, the smell of blood hits your face. Uh, a blood-stained table stands in the middle of this otherwise empty room. There is a cloth draped over the table, and you can see blood splots starting to form at random parts. You can't make out the shape of what's under there. But it smells like death in this room. Um, I kind of stand in the, the, the doorway and look back at the party. Well, th this place has quite a few horrors in it, doesn't it? Should I take um, a closer look? I um I follow him in. I'd say yeah, take a closer look. So I, I enter the, the blood room. My specter is standing over here somewhere. Um and 
I will take a look under the, the cloth. <laughs> okay. So, as you uh, head up towards the table there, uh, sorry, hold on just a second. Okay. So, as you head up towards the table, um, the cloth that's hanging over it, um, you are able to very easily slip off the cloth. What you find on the table uh, is parts. Humanoid parts. And you notice that all of the parts that are on the table are not from the same person. And they are all female body parts. This is the work of the abbot. It must be. Making another plush golem? Either that, or making another bride. Oh, right. So, is uh, there a specter there? Uh, yeah, it's one of those nurses just kind of standing in the corner. Oh, okay. <clears throat> Bantam, do you happen to know where Esmeralda went? No. Uh, she gave me that message and disappeared from the window. And by the time that I got back up to it, she was gone. And I'd also like to take this opportunity quickly and painlessly say that I thought that the abbot was using people to make the bride. I feel like that's the general consensus at this point, but no. I, I'm not sure where to start to look for Esmeralda. She must be here somewhere. We have two other rooms. Can I cast uh, Detect Thoughts to see if I can find anything? Sure. Also, I'm still on the first floor. Hexam I don't know if everyone else is on the second floor. Hexamer, go ahead and uh, roll um, a or, uh, either Perception or Investigation, whichever one's okay. better for you. Let me see. Okay, so, uh, well, as you kind of uh, start to uh, put your feelers out for uh, any thoughts or anything around you, um, you are interrupted by a voice that comes from out here. And with the door open, uh, you guys are able to hear it as well. Um, you, oh shit! Sorry, I gotta move you real quick. <laughs> I was standing in the doorway, so. Yeah. So, uh, you hear from behind? What is this? God damn it! Oh. Is it a lead? <laughs> from behind you, you hear. All of you hear this out loud. You hear. Well, it's about time you found me. Oh, am I just staring straight at her? <laughs> yes. So, oh. she drops her invisibility spell. And standing in the room with you is Esmeralda. Nice. Your very Ooh. first... Legendary person? Uh, well, your very first goal when oh. it comes to the Taroka cards. Yay! Yeah. Finally! Here we go. Castle Raven left. The other three nice. cards. <laughs> okay, guys. I do have to stop it there tonight. We yeah. found it all the way to Esmeralda and that's exactly where I wanted to end tonight. So I'm so glad you guys stuck around for a little while longer. Uh, awesome. Ah, it was so cool. And you guys are so not even done. Oh my god. <laughs> and I got to, to use my specter feature. Yes. And you'll have it next time because I don't think we're going to rest up here. I, yeah, thought no. she was, I thought she was going to be underneath the tattered 
blanket and you'd have to heal her all the way. And I was like, she we don't like have much of that. She just like, hello, folks. <laughs> <laughs> I I just looked around the room because I would have been able to see her. <laughs> uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, she's been, uh... Casted an invisibility spell. And now here we are. Just this whole time? Do you think she's been tailing us? Very I, possible. I think, she's, no, I think she's she was up. standing there the entire goddamn time. She saw you lose your shit and then fucking jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> she's just been trying like to like, you know how when you walk into a room and you know that person doesn't know you're there and you're like, well, I don't want to scare them. So like, what should I so you like try to like shuffle your feet so they like hear you, <laughs> so you don't actually scare them. Yeah, he jumps out the window anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, so this is, uh, we are moving along pretty goddamn well. Break next space. Phantom, what did she actually say to you? She, exactly what I said. Um, let me read, read a verbatim. Ooh, we've been rolling something fierce. I know. <laughs> She says, my name is Esmeralda. The abbot uh, will draw the evil here. We kill him here and now. Perfect. Well, that's only half a plan. <laughs> it's enough of a plan for me to be in. That's enough of a plan for you to be in? Y yeah. That's what? what? What are those dice? You should require convincing. You can put your dice roll on there. I'm just dragging my dice Do we? Do we gain a uh... level? Is this a huge milestone? <laughs> <laughs> nice nat no. one you got there. <laughs> you absolutely do not level up yet. But, you um, know, could try it. Donald, <laughs> would you be able to um, create a token for me to control my specter? Yeah. So that, I can, so that I can do it? Let me see what I got here. So how do I do that, Chris? Um, so you could make a specter token and then um, allow me to control it, and then that would put it in my notebook so that I could control it like my player character token. Got you. Okay. And Donald, you said the Abbot doesn't have um, a page you could share with us? Yeah, no, he doesn't. Oh, okay. strange. And that is weird. I imagine him as an albino fan. I, I zoomed in as close as I could to the token, and he... Oh, thank you. That's perfect. Oh, um, Spectre. And it it looked like he's wearing this really, like, Dark Souls-y looking outfit. Very garish hat. Good lord. You have a That's it. That's a token woman. I feel a lot more comforted by her. Um, is she a rogue? Does she have a class? Who? Esmeralda. You just met her. You don't know anything about her yet. Oh. Um, so, Donald, this it was just the handout. Um, do you have a token? Yeah, I'm these? trying to find it. Okay. How do I, now, what do I... I double click on it. Oh, here we go. Here, um, we go. here we go. I found it. Spectre. We're gonna go bam. I wanna know what that bird is. I wonder if it's like one of the druid of the feather. I think it's like a one that's been hidden away. The one on the right hand side there? Yeah. I don't know. I'm trying to find out how to let you take care of it. Player permissions. Um, if you open the token, let's see. Um, I, like I can't see it. I don't think as a player. Um, there should be like can be edited or controlled by um, like where you change the the token icon or, like the images. Yeah, it doesn't let me do it. I'm looking at it. It says let the players see it. It's usually below that. Can't you just um, make a new person and let him control that? 
Yeah, that would work too. Yeah, that's true. Well, we'll do all that uh, on our next uh, gathering here. Uh, okay. I don't know that I have the uh, capacity to do any more of that. Anyways, I hope you guys had fun with this tonight. I hope you guys are enjoying the Abbey. Yeah. As much as we can, I was really, really worried there. I thought those mongrels were going to open up all the other doors. <laughs> but uh, maybe they're not that smart. I don't know. Well, you never know. I don't um, know. And you're not out of here yet, so. I know. There's only <laughs> one way out. Back the way you came. So. Thank God. You're telling yeah, me the only way out. Well, that we could just. Yeah, no, it's uh, not the only way out. I, not even a little bit. <laughs> one of us will take the stairs and on top of the stairs, thunderclap them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, just be on the ceiling, thunderclapping them all. <laughs> Cole, I think you were on. You were still on the first level that whole time, weren't you? Yes. I have no idea what's going on. Oh, wow. Sorry. Sorry. I, how it's do still I. Outside the window. It's funny, yeah. It's funny because you're here. <laughs> Chris, how do I get rid of his icon on the thing again? Um, you just drag him back to where we are. Oh, God. Cole, what did you just see? Oh, I. I really want to look, but I'm not. I'm not looking. There you go, honey. I'm sorry. Woo! <laughs> Operating okay, cool. room. Esmeralda Diavanoa. Noise. So yeah. Dude, where do the stairs go? The stairs are here. Okay. That's kind of wonky. I know. Hmm. Okay. So, the uh, bloody conclusion of Ancient Markovia will uh, continue our next meeting. Now, uh, Persephone and Zeth are going to be moving, uh, packing tomorrow and moving on the 15th. Um, our next yeah. meeting for Strahd is going to be Friday night on the 21st, correct? Yeah. And then we have yep. Icewind Dale on the 22nd. Yes. Yep. Fantastic. I won't have to Woo! do anything that night. Yeah. <laughs> and I wanted to, Donald, you, um, I, I'm okay with you streaming Icewind Dale as well. So. That would be awesome. I was going to ask you about that because I think that'd be super fun. So. All right, kids. Well, again, thank you all for coming by and hanging out. We played till 11 o'clock tonight. Damn. Hell yeah. If that's how we used to play all together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean a lot. A lot of it was just side to bar talking, and getting snacks. <laughs> yeah, you know the fun stuff. But... Waiting for people to get here. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, I want to throw us back over here, and we will meet up again in a couple weeks. Did you purposely have Irina and Ismar be on there? Yeah, I just put them on there. Just, just messing around. Uh huh. What are you trying to tell us? Do you know, I'm trying to tell you everything with everything. Irina and Ismark, y'all don't even know who they are yet. No, I'm just kidding. No. Wait, I don't know who. I don't know who. Why does Ismark have the lesser in his name? Wouldn't it be crazy if he was a double agent the entire time? Are you going to be the one to ask him? Just graduate. No, I don't. I don't. Perfect. <laughs> That's oh, awesome. wow. Perfect. No joke. That's perfect. Hilarious. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what's driving him. All right, y'all. I'm going right. to head out for See the ya. night. I'm going to end the stream. Thank you all also for joining in on Twitch. Um, these Dungeons & Dragons streams get a weird a lot of views. So, peace out. Thank you all. They do? Yeah. They get like anywhere from like 30 to 100 views.